Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's coverage of the 2022 Online World Series of Poker. Today, it is event number seven, the Million Dollar Mystery Bounty Final Table, and it is an international affair with plenty of money up top, over $340,000 to be exact, and what an exciting event we have in store for you. I am Ali Najad. Joined by none other than Jeff Gross, your two media ambassadors for GG Poker, presenting this series of over 33 events as part of the aggregate 2022 World Series of Poker Online. Just tremendous payouts, tremendous fields, uh, just an astounding number of entries so far. Over 63,000 people have joined in just the seven events that we have had thus far, Jeff, and we have collected $19 million in prize pool. And there is so much more still to come as part of this online World Series of Poker Series. Uh, just talk to me today about this Mystery Bounty final table, uh, just an incredible format that we have in store. It's been wildly popular and of course, incredible payouts that we have seen already in this one. Yeah, no, it's been unbelievable. This is a 200 and I mean, $200 buy-in where you can win a million dollars. And guess what? We saw that already. Of course, there will be mystery bounties still awarded today. This is not to be confused with the progressive bounty. The players do not keep their bounty and you win that, right? This is a mystery. You get a chest. If we see the knockouts today, there's a $16,000 bounty still remaining. There's some other prizes. And we did see the million dollar get awarded already. It was to a household name who won the WSOP Player of the Year for No Limit last year, Mr. Scott Ball. Interestingly enough, he won the million dollar bounty, thought he won a thousand. Someone had to call him and say, hey, we saw in the lobby, think he won a million. He did check and sure enough, those commas were, they were commas, not a, not a decimal point and he did win a million. So pretty incredible stuff. Uh, we got more bounties to award today and big money up top and a bracelet. We certainly do. And on the topic of the bracelet, as we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves with the bounties, my apologies, we are actually going to be shipping authentic World Series of Poker bracelets to the winners here. This is every bit as legitimate as what one might be experiencing each and every summer in Las Vegas, where I am now. I know you're over on the East Coast in Florida. This is the real deal. This is the genuine article. You've got to look at it there. It is hand packed, shipped to your house. Just because we're playing behind a, a, a computer screen, doesn't mean that this isn't going to have all of the gravitas of an actual World Series of Poker event. And let's face it, Jeff, in terms of tournament poker, there are few things that can compare in terms of establishing credibility uh, worldwide for anybody as a, an aspiring poker player, or even as a recreational player, there's just no substitute. Yeah, it's, it's incredible. And this is something that this is not, as you mentioned, it's not an NFT. It's not a hologram. You are getting a real bracelet shipped to your house. It's Jacob's. It's the real deal. It is history. And there are still many more to be awarded. So we have a lot to play for. And of course, today we will play to a winner in this particular format, but it's super unique and super fun. And I can't wait to watch this and, and commentate. We saw some uh, international, international stars here. Some people are going to get to know and get to see them play in a wide variety of stack sizes. So it's going to be a very entertaining final table today. Now, the buy-in again, $100 going to the real prize pool and then $100 that's going to the bounty prize pool. And so you can imagine with equal prize pools and the bounty basically being only for those who make the money, 4,800 total places were paid. There is the opportunity to make even more than first place money with the million dollar bounty and some of the larger ones that we had available in the breakdown uh, when you know you just barely are on the inside of the bubble. Uh, so it makes for some unique storylines, perhaps some changes in the way that people would play in terms of willingness to call down like really just unique things emerge in these mystery bounty uh, formats, don't they? Yeah, it is. I mean, I kind of I, I got to say we saw this live at the WSOP where Matt Glantz won that million dollar bounty. It was insane. And of course, as I mentioned, I kind of I got excited, man. What are you going to do? I hear here's the hand where it happened. And look at this. You can see how you could get confused, Ali, when you're playing a twenty dollar buy in. It's the first hand to play on the second day. That looks like a, I think that's a thousand. You're not expecting to get a million. And look at that. One million just like that. First hand to play. First knockout. Scott Ball in your wallet. About three X first place awarded. <laughs> it's, 
it's hard to where, where do you go from there i mean i don't even know what i would do what are you doing ali if you win a million from your are home you on kidding the first me hit? i'm I mean, blasting i am yeah. blasting from that point in the tournament yes. forward it's a complete free roll 200 bucks uh, is the buy-in and then i've got a million in my back pocket let's go Three hundred forty-eight thousand dollars is going to be available to our winner today as you get your first look at the remaining nine payouts the tables were eight handed up until this final table as we mentioned 4,800 places paid courtesy of over 51,000 entries in that over $10 million collected in the prize pool. On deck, a payout for ninth of $34,870. And uh, look, that's not too shabby for a $200 buy-in. And of course, the opportunity to pick up that 348,000, still 10X between ninth and first place money as we are gonna be getting things underway. Uh, let's get a look if we can at the chip counts going into this and your first look at the actual players and jeff you and i are accustomed to to commentating on final tables where we have a lot more known commodities but in a field of over fifty thousand buy-ins let's face it it's going to be difficult to reach into a hat and grab a bunch of poker stars so congratulations to all of these guys i do note that the top two chip counts in mark wall and timo Desmet both are uh representing the dutchman the the netherlands they make a good showing. You know that. Poker, incredibly popular there. Hyunsuk Kim representing Singapore in third. The Brazilians always showing up in fourth. Diago Ferreira da Silva right there. Uh, then we have Kyrgyzstan, a country that seldom has been represented in my experience at final tables. Love to see that poker has actually reached into all corners of the globe. Uh, the Finns, obviously Patrick Antonius, perhaps the most famous of them. Tapio Vihakas in sixth representing that flag. You have a the Polish, uh, Ritis Strigunas, uh, in seventh there with 68 million, just behind him, the Aussie, Vincent Yushen Huang. And then Alexei Soltsnev is the shortest of the stacks. But note there, Jeff, he has picked up the lion's share of the bounties. And we do still have some bounty running, bounty money remaining to play for. Yeah, as we said, 16,000 available for the largest bounty. And this is, again, I mentioned progressive bounties, a very popular form of poker we see online. It's very different. So... This player has 42,000. He's the shortest stack. You might see people going crazy to win, to go for that huge bounty comparative to the rest of the players, but that's not the case here because it is just a mystery random bounty. And the players know the maximum that they can win right now is 16,000. That is what is left. So you're not going to see people go completely out of their way and make an insane call with any two per se to win the bounty. But, you know, and look at this. We're right yep, nothing it. insane. Our very first hand, the short stack, getting it in with an ace out of the big blind after the raise from Hyun Sup Kim with the pocket sixes, which are holding on the flop and the turn. A squeeze of the river brings a jack. And unfortunately for Alexei Soltsnev, it is GG time. And you see some of the other players giving some credit to uh, that gentleman there. Of course, here comes his bounty as he's busted in ninth place on the very first hand to play, picking up three thirty-four thousand dollars And how about a little $600 dessert, some frosting on that cake, but we are already down to just eight players. And based on the chip distributions, Jeff, we could see quite a few eliminations come fast here with the blinds at 1.75 million, 3.5 million. Nobody is all too deep. Uh, but of course, those biggest stacks of, of uh, you know, the Dutchman, 100 bigs should be enough to get them through uh, to some later stage play as we see a min raise under the gun from the Brazilian, Diago Ferreira with uh, the pocket eights being, things being thought over here by the ace three suited against that under the gun raise. Of course, those hands tend to lean out a little bit, don't they? Yeah, no, this is uh, something we expect to see. Pretty solid opening rages. Pocket eights under the gun, eight handed does qualify. And look at this. See a little sauce early from the 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 man going with the ace three suited. Can't blame him, but this is definitely on the more aggressive side. So I think we're we're off to a fast start, Ali. Seeing a knockout right away, seeing some light three bets. We're gonna see some action today. Yeah, looking forward to it, obviously. And you know, things online do transpire a little bit differently than they do in their live counterparts. As we now have it back over to the Brazilian, how's he going to react to this three bet? It's another 12 million and change for him to make this call. And he's going to lay it down, Jeff. Yeah, I can't blame him. There's big ICM. He's actually one of the more vulnerable stacks with his particular stack size. It'd be a big mistake to, to bust in theory, right? With the having much shorter stacks and big jumps. So can't fault him for that. And really nice recognition by the player to, to three bet ace three suited, understanding that and, and showing, showing nice, nice awareness there. 
And a warm welcome to all of you who are joining us here for event number seven of the 2022 World Series of Poker Online. It is, of course, the Million Dollar Mystery Bounty Final Table. Love to see you chatting and uh, being a part of the conversation as we see King Queen for Mark Wall raise and take it for the big boss stack and an ace king under the gun for the man from Kyrgyzstan. 7.7 yeah, million chip open. Looks yeah. like it should get through. Yep. Ace King for sure and open. We saw him getting saucy with the Ace Three suited, so Ace King is a nice delight for him. Definitely playable hand, and he is off to a decent start. It's always important to get that first three bet through, put out some chips, set the tone, and you know he's off to a really nice start for himself. A couple guys on the sixty million stack depth, as you mentioned, that are going to have to get moving here. So we are, uh, you know, off to off to a quick start. Down to eight. And the presence of those short stacks is always beneficial for the big stacks, Jeff, with the ICM implications that you talked about, those pay jumps, you see the prize pool down there in the bottom right of your screen, things that these guys should be thinking about in terms of their willingness to put their stacks at risk if they're in that middling position. Absolutely. And it's always interesting to see how players react, how they will respond. And even though people kind of know the right strategy, it doesn't mean they pull the trigger. So that's always, you just never know. That's why final tables big money events like this it's so exciting to see who's coming to play who's coming to ladder who's going for that trophy well i'll tell you what there's a little bit of get up and go in this hyun sub kim playing under the singaporean flag six four off suit i don't know if this is a misclick he cold called the upfront raise from the big stack of mark wall his queen jack always in trouble against his uh countryman timo Desmet's pocket jacks but on that ace high board things get a little complicated and note the opportunity for kim now with two players checking in front of him and this open ender, he can put a little feeler out there as a semi bluff and potentially weed out not one but two players. We'll see how Timo decides to react as eight million is the bet. Well, I can just tell you that is not GTO. Maybe a misclick, maybe not. Either way, what a flop. He flops against mm -hmm. the particular two hands. Amazing. Plus, he's open end. He's got some equity. He's got a heart in there too. And you know, Timo may have got. Oh hi! What a oh what a wow. Turn right away no waiting um Timo has a little bit of sniff here with the two jacks jeff obviously not necessarily buying that kim over called flatting behind him with an ace it's plausible but he was going to test them now on this turn which looks to be dry against the flatting range of kim he's left with two jacks on an ace high flop and he's drawing stone dead yeah it's uh this is going to be interesting sizing here there is hearts available that could be immediately worrisome i don't think he's worried about two much more. And I actually, I like the, the smallish sizing here. He really is trying to price in, not let an ace get away or, you know, yeah. a jaw that is affordable, but really small sizing. And let's see what Timo does. 56 million out there, a little over 10 million to call for Timo. And it's not necessarily about that 10 million, but the impending bet on the river that you need to be thinking about a move ahead, sort of like chess. Those two jacks are really nowhere to go territory. So the Dutchman does lay it down and a nice first Orbit here for Kim as he picks up a healthy pot. Now an ace nine in the cutoff for the Brazilian Ferreira. Yeah, gonna gonna open it up. And then we see a player, Tapio, there he has a tough call to make or tough, tough decision. If he wants to jam, does he want to get aggressive or just fold? Uh, Jack Queen suited, definitely a playable hand, but does give it up. And we see Mark in the big blind go with his Jack Queen suited, take a flop. Two overs and the gut shot straight draw on the paired board with a couple of spades in it. Not bad texture for Ferreira. Ace nine. He does have two pair. Going to play the pot control game with the check back here. And Wall, of course, going to take his stab now. A little over five million, the figure. And as played, obviously, Ferreira was prepared to make this call on the vast majority of turns. Yeah, he's going to be playing. It's a matter, does he want to try to see where he's at, maybe charge some nines that are in really bad shape? Also a hand such as Jack Queen or Jack 10 that might have a, some equity or spades. Does he want to maybe set the price here, kick it up big, make the player make a decision? I mean, you're worried about an eight, but not really, right? You, That's not something that's super, super worrisome. I think he's going to race here. Let's see. Only time hey, will tell. And on the conversation of time, you see that clock there above Ferreira. That's his time bank. The remaining time that he has to make decisions through the run of this final table. The raise did come in from the Brazilian, and you note that Wall made the call, taking his shot with the two overs and the gutter, swinging a miss on the river. The seven is a pretty wet card in terms of the 10 jack. We could see a big bet here. Honestly, I, I love Ooh. it. I, 
I love it. It's it's a card. If you're going to play Jack Queen like that, you got to think about what you're representing. Jack 10 certainly in his range and not so much for for Diego, right? He's probably not going to re-raise for that price with Jack 10. So he can kind of eliminate that. I like this sizing a lot. And I mean, Diago, you see the spades miss. You kind of played your hand deceptively on the flop with the top top uh, top pair top kicker. Uh, on the board nine eight. I don't know. This is a this is a big ask of a call. I love this all around. Let's see. Let's see if Diago can sort this out. And this would be a very big call for him. Forty six million representing roughly half of his remaining chips with ninety six in front of him. What man, Ali? This is I, I love it. We're off to a fast start. We've seen some 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 interesting plays, some some collisions, and this is this is guys are going for it. I love this play by. Mark, if he's going to call the turn, you're not just calling to hit specifically. You got to have some bluffs, and this is uh, this feels like a good. I think he might have bluffed spades, honestly, as well. I don't think he thinks his opponent would have bet, um, yeah. would have raised him on a spade draw. Oh this dynamic wow! Turn. Look at that. Ferreira folds the best hand here, and Wall giving us a look, perhaps Jeff, of exactly how it is that he found himself in the chip lead coming into this final table. It is top shelf caliber moves like that. You have to be willing to make in order to kind of scale the summit and find yourself a bracelet as it were here in event number seven and open from Kim, a six off suit queen nine suited out of the big for the Aussie, a very reasonable defend and now top pair on the nine, seven deuce board with backdoor clubs for Vincent, who is at present the shortest remaining stack. And so a lot of pressure can certainly be applied. Yeah. I, I, this is a, this is a glimpse at Mark, who is the chip leader, just showing his willingness to get in there and mix it up. Not just trying to make and ha make a hand. I, I'm impressed with that play. I love the sizing. I love how he played it. And I think, you know, we're going to get to see more from him, of course, as the chip leader. Let's see if he keeps exerting force and separate himself as the chip leader and control the table, but great start for him. Kim with the follow through of 6.6 .6 and Vincent deciding I came to play top pair. Let's go with it. If you beat me, you beat me. And of course, Kim is not going to be able to make the call here for an extra 43 million with ace high. It would simply be reckless. Yeah, it would. It would it's a little, it's close, but it's still a lot. Even if you're ahead of a hand that's drawing, they got so much equity. You just have ace high, your opponent's going to have like the two live cards or a straight draw with it. So it's, I like the fold. I like the check raise. And as one of the shorter stacks, the risk premium, that means if he goes out now, it's not such a big deal, right? The stack we saw, the pressure got put on earlier by uh, with Diego or one of the guys that have 100, 120 million. Those are the players in the middle that have the most pressure to not bust. So I, I really like so far the, the game plan and what's going on. The only hand we've seen that's super out of line was a four, six off, but really well executed, picked it up. So uh, players are playing well. By the way, if there was one of these million dollar bounties still remaining, perhaps the calculus becomes a little bit different for Kim in a spot with the dusty A6, some backdoor runner runner straight opportunities, maybe we bink an ace, as we know that and in fact, so many of the larger bounties have already been claimed as we see two tens open and take it pocket sevens, by the way, for Stragunish over there ended up hitting the mug. Um, remaining bounties, Jeff, we do have one $16,000 bounty. We have one $3,100 bounty. We saw a $600 bounty get claimed by our ninth place finisher, one left, then a $260 bounty. We have two of those and three $110 bounties. So really not much of a consideration, save for perhaps that 16 K with the payout right now at 46,000 could look to be, uh, you know, significant in terms of. Uh, relationship to the actual payout on tap as we see pocket eights for the fin now on the heels of pocket tens going up against that chip leader who has ace nine suited and he is facing a follow through with just the ace high and backdoor diamonds and it's such a good feeling isn't it Jeff when you got a stack that's deep enough to allow you to just constantly break out the war hammer and put everybody to the test you look at the pay jump between eighth and seventh it is sixteen thousand dollars Nevertheless, Vihakas does tear one off. Unfortunately for him, the texture on the turn, somewhat disastrous against that wall range that he's representing. But with a check back, perhaps he's going to feel a little bit more comfortable. Who knows? Here we are on the river. I doubt he's going to be betting. If he did, super small and defensive to try to dictate the sizing, maybe. Yeah, could block or bet, but this is a very, very 
not a not a nice board. Let's just call it that. We could use an adjective there. But I think if he checks, though, he, Mark could put the pressure on him, right? Mark could have some checkbacks. He can deduct it. The player's not going to check Ace Jack twice here. So I, I'll be curious if Mark just waves the white flag or if he wants to really put a big bet, maybe even an over bet, and put Tapio in a really tough spot. Uh, we saw it once already, a big bluff. Let's see if he comes with it again. Okay. 27 million into a pot of 36. And Biakas was all too happy to put his hand in the mug. Three over cars, just not really the right board for those two eights, which have slid over a seat to Ivanyacek. Yeah, this is... Uh, He's king here for Timo DeSmet. Yes, this is going to be going to be going upstairs and be interesting to see our player who ace three suited showed some aggression he's got a got a modest hand here but again an uncomfortable spot a lot to play for a lot of a lot of risk if you were to get it in even in a coin flip at this stage back over to abakirov off of what is now 131 million facing the re-raise to 24 million a little north of 3x and these middling pairs jeff they're so uncomfortable you know that every now and again the guy wakes up with a bigger pair so when you stuff it in there you're really just taking a big chance but when you flat the board texture can obviously contain many over cards and leave you sort of feeling like all you're doing is set mining and as such we see the eights go into the mug nice pick up there or the man from holland one of two dutchmen here at our final table of event number seven. Another ace king now for the short stack of Ritis Strigunesh. What are we working with in the mug here today, Jeff? I see you going to it. It's the second time in a row. We got a little black coffee. What are we doing? Black, black coffee and water. I got, I got, I'm ready for a big day here, Ali. We're, we're, we're strapped in, man. This is, uh, you know, I gotta be prepared. This could be three, four hours. I think, uh, what's your coffee quoted there? Are you coffee guy, tea? What are you, what are you working with? I'm not a coffee guy, but I did house a five hour energy. So let's hope the final table doesn't go any further than that. Otherwise I may just crash. <laughs> King 10 suited now for Stragunas who, Stragunas rather, who picked up that pot there. No resistance. Feels like yeah. a good enough hand to open. And I think he agrees as the min raise comes in to 7 million. We'll see just how frisky Hyun Sub Kim is as he's on the button with a suited King. I mean, we saw him with four, six off in late position, king five suited on the button. That just feels like, I, I don't know. I think he, the only, the only thing here is the stack sides, right? It's against an opponent that there's not so much maneuverability. And I, I like the decision to let it go, right? You're just, there's not that much implied odds, probably dominated. And he does get out of the way. So nicely. Both done. players flopping a pair here, Jeff, on the ace, 10, six board with a couple of hearts. Advantage Vihakas, who defended from the big blind, obviously has a fairly broad range in that spot that includes not just the ace X, so we can understand the C bet here from Stragunish. 6.3 million, navigating off of that short stack. Now that he's been called the three of diamonds, a very dry turn card. Is he gonna sprinkle another bet out there or play pot control, check back and see what happens on the river? Yeah. His hand's strong. I think he, I like the checking around here to just try to get to showdown 32 million. I mean, you can see the SPR stacked pot ratio. It's an important pot for our friend here who has 47 million, but it doesn't look good. I don't see how there's, there's really no way you can win this pot. Ace nine improves. And yeah. I think he's going to just, you know, hopefully be able to get away for, for that sizing. Certainly not going to be going to be paying off. I don't think, but he's not snap folding. Shout out to Dinej in the chat there asking whether or not you receive a physical bracelet. And it looks like another member of the chat has already stepped right in to advise that indeed our champion today will be receiving an actual World Series of Poker bracelet hand packed made by Justin's, just like the ones that players here during the summer in Las Vegas do receive. I say here because that's where I am right now. Jeff's out in Florida. With no internet yesterday, which made things a little bit anxiety inducing. I'm glad that things have been restored out that way. We did get an earful from our production team out in South Korea about the lack of reliable internet services back in the States. Well, yeah, it doesn't happen all too often, but when it does, it's obviously an issue, especially if you're trying to play online poker. Yeah. Jack that Deuce. Was, 
not ideal, but it, it worked out. No AC today. Everything, you know, it's something. It's always something, Ali. It's not easy out here, you know. We, we're we're getting through it, and I will be seeing you in Cyprus. Excited about that for the Triton, some big events there. I know, and we're talking sure. about Madrid last time where we did that events. I know there was some jet lag both ways. It was pretty exhausting. So I'm excited to get over there, get in, get into the action, and we'll be uh, we'll be doing some more commentary as well as the final table for the WSOP later in September. So we got yeah. a lot of action, Ali. A lot of a lot of good events to cover. No doubt about it. Both of the blinds here have Queen X, Jack and 10 suited respectively for small and big blinds. What about you in tournaments, Ali? Are we any, I mean, does it, you see the online stuff going, right? Cyprus, I believe is an area you can play from and maybe some extra time before when the events end. Does it interest you? Would you go for a brace online? Are you more just cash games these days? What's your interest in online tournaments? Uh, look, I, I certainly recognize just how exciting being able to play in, in particular an online tournament where, you know, things can wrap up a lot faster, just the, the speed with which you're able to administer things logistically. Uh, so a lot of the dissuasive elements of, of live tournaments for me, which is the time commitment, you know, spread across so many days of play, very exhausting. You could end up making a big investment and not actually uh, come away with anything whatsoever. And for somebody that has the kind of schedule that I do, not unlike yourself, busy, a lot of stuff going on, uh, it, it's tough to make those kind of commitments. So the online side is nice. But for me, I need to be able to quit and start whenever I want. I'm just a cash game guy. I play live here. It's kind of a social thing. Uh, as we see the big blind defense from Wall with the Queen 10 suited, uh, taking a turn on the Ace 8 7 board, which has paired the 8. Note Kim not willing to fire there. Now a king comes off and Wall has some showdown value with queen 10 on a paired flop here. The queen playing, but of course we see Kim treading lightly against that big stack. You note that he is very much aware of those ICM implications with the shorties, Vincent and Ritas out there. Ferreira also somewhat short here. Yeah, I was interested to see if Rytus would go with his stack, the king-queen off. It's just good enough. He also is going to get some credibility opening under the gun. I like this, right? Some players may fold, take the big blind, and big blind Annie kind of just try to survive. But him showing the willingness to play, he is showing that he is looking for that bracelet. He's not necessarily just looking for that one ladder spot. And you know, in this particular spot, like the big blind has to be tight here. This is not a spot that you really look at that. Gets the east side to fold. I like the fold from the big blind. I like the open and well done from right. very important pot to pick up for his stack. Gives him an orbits plus worth of blind and Annie money. And King queen off suit for Ferreira. I, I was just going to say, Ali, it sounds like you're saying, I get about the tournaments, but the mystery bounty, if you're in the jurisdiction available, this feels like, you know, Scott Ball, you know, he won it, the 200 for a million, like, you know, is that, is the mystery bounty, would you, if you were in a place, would you flick it in on the day? Would this be one you'd like to play? 200 bucks? Absolutely. Are you kidding me? We talked about it, a 4,800 to one shot to win a million bucks potentially is uh feels like a beautiful little overlay. Obviously you got to get yourself into the money and Lord knows I don't have uh some polish to my tournament game, cash game, mixed games, love it. But uh, there really are some very talented people, including these unknown commodities that we see, Jeff, what with the wealth of information and kind of that learning curve was really changed in a major way when, when online poker came about, the experience you could condense into such a short period of time by playing multiple tables at once, sit and goes, MTTs, just 24 seven, you could really catch up to you know, the body of knowledge that was out there at that time. Just one time being declared here from Wall. He gets away from the three bet, it looks like. Ace 10 now going to be an opener for Vincent. Yeah, that was a that was a huge pickup for Rytus. You see he got the better hand to fold in the game of inches there, because I think Ace 10, we would have seen the call for him putting in the min raise and against that stack, but Ace 9 was the best hand but he did force a fold. So again, right this very timely spots, picking up a light open and a, and a light three bet jam, light-ish, right? Ace eight suited, but recognizing Mark is going to open very wide in that position with his stack. So I'm a fan so far, really impressed with Mark and right how they've been playing so far this, this mm -hmm. final table. Mm -hmm. Ace 10, a little probe on the King seven, five board. Jack six going straight into the muck, understandably. Now an ace queen for Abakirov. 
Doesn't look like he's going to encounter any resistance all the way through the big blind, which should be defending with the ace six suited. And in the any format, Jeff, you're so incentivized to defend the big with so much money in there, especially against these min raises, as we see Herrera do exactly that coming up empty. Same story though, for the ace queen of Abaki Robin. Let's see just how willing he is at his depth relative to Ferreras with those other stacks of uh, Vincent and Ritus out there to be mindful of. Yeah, I mean, this million. is... Yeah, the, the ante, this format too, it's just, uh, you're really incentivized to be aggressive. We see the blinds already up now to 2 million, 4 million. So this is uh, right us off of about 15 blinds right now. And it, it, you got you to gotta stay active, really, as we saw the king-queen off is such a big, big moment there to open that in a close spot. And it, the players that are willing to go for it, take a little extra risk, it, it pays off in a big way down the stretch, gives you a better opportunity to win the tournament and stay in. So that, uh, that's something really to pay attention to. And I, I think that these players have shown so far today that they are very, very willing and able. And, you know, it's Ali, you've done so many final tables. It is curious to see the strategy, how players come in, right? And how who's like really going for it and who's trying to ladder. Because you just, there's a lot of factors that go into whether you want to ladder or go for the win. And, and today it seems like we're seeing more geared towards going for the win. Yeah, and obviously those shorter stacks understand that to get themselves into a position where they could actually contend for a W, they do need to take some risks at some point. You don't want to whittle yourself down to the point where one, two, three doubles and you're only back to where you started on the day because obviously it's tough to hold and double over and over again. So you got to bob and weave a little bit. Now, an, an interesting little line being taken by these two aces of Vincent. I believe he checked back the 10 high rainbow board figuring that maybe Kim's range was going to be in a really bad way, drawing dead to making the best hand on the turn. We do see that lion's share of equity being picked up courtesy of the Jack of Diamonds. But for Kim, it is a swing and a miss on the river after Vincent milks him for a turn bet. And now on that river, he is left firing all in into 64 million. King High should hit the muck promptly. Yeah, nice to have aces, nice to have the best hand, nice to pick up chips, and we see Vincent shoot over 100 million now. Timely with the blinds up, so he's he's healthy. He's got a, a 20, what's that, 28 blinds, so plenty of chips, and it is uh, Mark getting to work here with King Queen suited under the gun, going to kick up for the min raise with a huge Two million, stack. four million are the blinds right now here at level 34 of event number seven. Looking at the structure sheet, it's shocking just how big the blinds could potentially get if somehow we managed to get super duper deep in the uh, in the tournament here today. As we see now an ace king under the gun for the Aussie. Yeah, this is you know eight handed. Sometimes it's 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 just whole cards up is amazing. It gives you a really big feel for what's happening and how hard it is to get good hands you know how often you see hands collide how, how often is distribution of of the cards do they line up and it just shows again being aggressive is is important because it's hard to make a pair it's hard to make a hand it's hard to get dealt a big hand and just as i say that though ali we got we got some fireworks here there's a car stuck on the train tracks and you know who's behind the wheel it is mark wall the only good news for him is that these two queens are going to be running in to an only 66 million cheap chip deep stack of Tapio Viacas with these two kings. And that open to 8 million should be met with a three bet from Wall. And I don't think it's going to be to the full 58 million, Jeff, to you. Yeah, 22 million. And of course, I would imagine we're going to see some stuffing here from the fin. All in it goes. Snap call cooler for Wall, but it is a blow that he can absorb. Jack high board, king safe. Nine is clean, a little squeeze, don't show them pain. And Ooh. it's a safe ace of hearts on the end. And Viakas is going to enjoy a nice double through the chip leader, which will bring him back down under 300,000, 300 million rather in chips. Not too often you get to talk about a, a stack that deep when it comes to a live event, just unheard of. 
Of course, these fields just so incredibly big, over 50,000 entries, bringing our prize pool to over $10 million here. Hyun Sub Kim, up front, Queen Jack off suit, opens up. Now a three yeah. bet from Wall with 10-9 off suit, seeing something a little bit different from that chip leader than we've seen thus far. Very dry, deuce, deuce, five, flop. Queen Jack in a bit of no man's land here. Got to respect the big stack. Checks it over. Yeah, I I, uh, I like this. And also, I guess, you know, it's, it's interesting to see this player. He does three bet, who is sticky, had the best hand, but this is now a very big pickup for Mark with a very modest hand. As you said, really nice recognition and nice execution. Picks himself up a nice pot after that adversity kings to queens. Bit of a, of course, a cooler. He's finding ways to win chips without without made hands. So nicely done again from Mark. And it looks like Vincent stays busy across uh, beyond the felt, rather, as I'm looking at the chat. Josh McCulley stepping in. I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt on this one to say that, that uh, Vincent is also a K-pop superstar. Could that be true? It feels right. You know, he's... It could be, and he's look at this. He's uh, he's got a good situation here. It looks like he's just gonna sure take this down. Although you know, listen, we've been surprised. There are people that take four bet and just slam stuff in. Ace queen would actually be a pretty uncomfortable spot if got four bet here. Although it's a strong hand, Ellie. I don't I don't know. This is uh, this is uh, again when they start when those t seconds start ticking down, the more likelihood there is of something happening. So let's see what Tapio is gonna come with the fin finish flag there. Ace six through ace nine, though, a little bit less desirable than the ace deuce through ace five, as we've kind of come to see an emerging trend in terms yeah. of dusty aces that will play back against somebody who is three betting. Of course, we have an ace. We block an ace on our opponent's range. Uh, but in the event that we are dominated, at least we have sort of that dangler, which isn't going to have any interference and can work in conjunction with the ace to make some of these wheels uh and that's been a bit of a trend of late as we see the blinds squaring off no real meaningful connection at all on the ace king four board yeah pretty pretty good flop for our friend ken here who is gonna see bet and just like you see here the you know, he's got position he just decides he's gonna go for it he's gonna take a shot and, and win with jack high well done Nice, nice. I like Kim's game too. Kim's fun to watch. I, I do, Ali, if you had a bet, misclick or not, four, six off based on what you're seeing. I mean, it's so hard to think that an overcall of a two bet with six, four off would be something intentional. But as we continue to see the way that he's played here at this final table, it becomes more and more possible. We see him taking, sticking his neck out a little bit more than anybody else so far and doing it without that big boss stack that we kind of assume sometimes will be more willing to take chances because they can. Um, so, you know, in terms of uh, the personalities that are starting to emerge here, the profiles that we're starting to build, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's a non-zero that, uh, that it wasn't a misclick uh, by Kim. I mean, listen, these things happen even at the highest echelons of poker live. I'm thinking about jungle man, Dan Cates in the world series of poker PPC this year, a $50,000 buy-in event in a single pot against Benny Glazer. He misclicked live twice on the same street, in fact, inadvertently checkman raising on not one but two occasions. Just a mind-boggling hand. Certainly welcome you to go back and look for it online. It should be out there somewhere as we see these two ace-queens squaring off, running deuces, putting trips on the board. Ferreira did pick up the queen high heart draw on the turn, but obviously willing to tread lightly. So these guys are going to have our first chop pot of the afternoon in terms of being out here in the States. By the way, let us know if you're out there streaming us live in the chat. Love to hear from you where you are in the world. It's always fascinating to me just how far and wide a lot of the support comes from. Some people have already kind of chimed in saying that they are part of uh, Bihakis' uh, rail, I would imagine that that means they're out in Finland in the evening as we see Hyun Sook Kim, understandable, 6-7 suited on the button, very worthy of an open, but he is going to be met with two kings, and the three bet should be impending, maybe a 3x in that 24 million range. Yeah, yeah. you know, this is maybe with an exploit sizing, because I think some players might 
just have a three bet jam off the 20 big stack. But I guess that, you know, this player who's shown the propensity to be sticky to play a little more hands. I think he definitely wants to, I like your, your thought there too, for that extra reason, just keep it, keep it affordable. He does give the player a chance to call, but ultimately Kim showing discipline with a nice suited hand there. Just yep. not a lot of implied odds. So, so uh, I trust me, I, I wasn't sure that wasn't a guaranteed fold with that hand for that. You know, it's just, it's a nice cracker. Nice there. Keep, keep an eye there on the chat, by the way, India, Puerto Rico, the Netherlands, Germany, Ireland, so many places, Turkey. I think I saw it there. Uh, just, incredible mexico now belgium croatia just the international support for online poker poker in general uh it's really inspiring jeff obviously you know there were some dark days after black friday some real difficult uh times for a lot of people but it is alive and well and thriving no more so and you know listen you might think that jeff and i are doing this because we're playing for the home team i challenge you to tell me a place in which online poker is thriving more than right here on gg poker aligned with the strongest brand out there uh, which is the world series of poker and it is not a coincidence two juggernauts in the spaces joining forces to deliver the best product available and that is a somewhat objective opinion you ask anybody kind of out there in the in the pro streets and they'll tell you that uh the boys at GG do it right. And that's in large part, by the way, Jeff, responsible for why it is that you and I kind of uh, discussed where we wanted to hitch our wagons in terms of our ambassadorship. You know, there's more than one choice. And uh, we settled on GG, and I'm so glad that we did. It's been exciting. This is our very first opportunity to work together since the announcement. And it is going to be the first of many to come. And we look forward to delivering you the best and the brightest that there is uh, in terms of online commentary and content as we see wall and uh, Vincent ace against a queen here on the ace queen seven board back to where diamonds have evaporated for Vincent. He does have a couple of blockers working if the flush draw does come in in the front or the back door, which is more than we can say for wall who lacks both the diamond and a big club. Top pair still treading lightly out of position, still the best hand. Is Vincent going to sprinkle something in there for value, perhaps, into 31 6? I think it's too much showdown, but definitely a reasonable option. So he does go for a check, which is well done for him because he would have lost some more chips. We wouldn't have seen Mark full top pair. So well, well played all around. And yes, Ali, it is an honor to be a part of GG. It's great to have signed with you as well, man. Been obviously watching and being a part, seeing your commentary for so many years. So this is, this is a treat. And as you mentioned, just the best software, best guarantees, best brands aligning, just kind of feels right place, right time. Very exciting. Very exciting to be on board and, and get to collaborate. And it's not too often over the course of my career, certainly, uh, you know, the big body of it of late that I've been able to dig my teeth back into the online streets and the streams. And, you know, it's a different pace. It's, it's a different sensibility, uh, you know, unknown commodities, uh, it's nice, you know, exercising a little bit of a different part of the commentary brain. And uh, it's cool, man. It's fun. It's, it's great to see it alive and well. And uh, for Abaki Rav, not great to see some playback from Vincent as he opened the button with Queen-9 off suit off of uh, 130 million, roughly. And he will respect the three bet from the big blind as Ace-4 takes the aggressive line. These guys are good, Jeff. You know, it's tempting... To think that it's such a crapshoot to get yourself into a final table with over 50,000 entries. But listen, I, <laughs> it's tough to just get lucky the entire way. You're doing some things right if you punched your ticket into this final table repeatedly and consistently. And I think we do need to show a lot of respect to those who have uh, made the commitment and managed, obviously, through a combination of good fortune and a, a lot of skill. To, uh, to get themselves here. Earned, not given, as we see the ace 10 of Diago opening. Nine, 10 suited, so tempting, but Diakis resisting the lure. Obviously a little bit of action left behind him, some big stacks, doesn't wanna get squeezed by flatting. Yeah, so, so far we've seen the chip leaders really sort of do their thing, chip up. And of course, Mark, you see he's got a still a very healthy stack and he did get cooled with the Kings, the Queens to Kings. So, I mean, nothing really out of the ordinary at the moment. We saw a knockout early, still eight handy. You can see the payouts in the lower right. Big money up top. I mean, 348000 You mentioned this earlier. It's such a big number for a $200 buy-in. And with half the prize pool, 
going to bounties. That really is, now we're talking about almost 700,000 really would have been first, but we did see the half get awarded the bounties. And we, we still have that 16K bounty to play for. That's a, that's a huge ROI available mm-hmm. for the players. And, and this is actually a close spot where the week A should call, I think, with, the, with that bounty opportunity too. And, and just probably the best hand. Yep. I do see uh, Joao Lopez asking if the million bounty is out yet. Yes, it was delivered. One of the very first hands of play, and it was delivered to one Scott Ball, a known commodity in poker. Didn't even realize he had won the million dollars. Jeff told a great story sort of in the pregame about that, where somebody had to call it to his attention. He thought he had just won $1,000. What a beautiful surprise that is. It's crazy. It's such a crazy crazy double sweat just to actually see it pop up on your screen miss it and then get to get called like right. what do you think you're feeling in that like ali if you call me like hey did you just win a million dollar bounty and like I, I would think you're trolling me but then i would like you, you, like because then you realize oh wait like for a second before you go to the cashier like that's got to be a quite a rush of a, of a of an experience for a sweat so yeah pretty sick i can only imagine man i mean <laughs> a big part of the lure of playing these bounty tournaments is Look, you get yourself in the inside of the money bubble and you think, oh, small payout, it's a $200 event. No, you might win a milli, almost 3x what we've got up top for first place. And that's not to cast a shadow over the legitimacy of the ROI in terms of buying into a $200 event and being able to win 348,000. As you and I both know, Jeff, you know, 100 to 200 player field in, you know, a 25K uh, and you might not generate that big uh, a prize up top, uh, as we see a seven, three here, a pair for Timo de Smet on the button yeah. following through. So Ali, I want to, on the super millions generally do a thing where we play for some money or a dinner. And as we're first time doing uh, the commentary together for GG, how about that? Since we're going to be in Cyprus together soon, why don't we okay. do a draft, a snake draft, where we'll see red or black, you choose the next flop, and then we'll, you, we will just alternate players. And then whoever wins, the other one owes, uh, we'll do a nice dinner. How about that? Okay, for, yeah, that sounds yeah. good. So we've got eight players remaining. Each of us will be able to choose four players. And it uh, might be fun for those who are out there streaming live right now in the chat to kind of follow along with us. Maybe you pick Jeff's, uh, you know, draft uh, position and, uh, you know, uh, or, or, you know, mine and, and see whether or not you line up in terms of the picks that we make. Uh, we'll start next hand as we see Viakas with the ace eight, fortunate to hit his side card against the ace 10, which had him dominated pre King high Plus. board, however, and that over card with the lack of the diamonds for Viakas could be of Ooh. concern, and this Ooh. is a little bit of a trouble card here for DeSmet. It's going to cost him some more chips as he binks the ace, a two outer, but it is aces up for Viakas. Fifty-two nine in the middle. Are there are there kind of arguments to be made for a check back? Apparently, there are. As DeSmet plays pot control, didn't want to necessarily stick something out there and get pushed off of that. Also could induce a bluff on the river with a draw heavy texture in terms of some straightiness in the five, eight out of some big blind defense range, the diamonds, maybe some, some backdoor Broadway pickups. Now the backdoor hearts have come home and no Viacus is treading very lightly here. Didn't decide to bet it. Maybe he's the one looking to induce. We'll know shortly whether or not he was going to check raise. And in fact, Happy to snap call that 17 million chip bet on the river for DeSmet. And who can blame him for seeking value, Jeff? Unfortunate turn card there for him as he pushes Viakas up and over 160 million. Yeah, nice, nice pot there. 164 is a very strong stack. 40 blinds playing a play for. So red, red or black, Ali, so we don't miss because we'll get. Uh, okay, we uh, uh, well, obviously we see all of the cards out right that's, now. I'll go ahead fine. and pick black. That was what I was going to pick anyway. Okay, and how about this? Why don't we make it fun? We'll do something for the audience too. Uh, the our second pick, so not not each of our first choices, but whoever we draft second, each of those players will do a giveaway for the stream. So if our second choice wins, the stream will get a hundred dollars. If any other player wins, we're gonna do a fifty dollar ticket giveaway. So that's okay. what we're gonna do. They're gonna and if if you're whoever you pick second and I pick second, if they win, it'll be a hundred instead of fifty. But either way, guys, hit that thumbs up. We'll have a keyword later. And if you are hitting the thumbs up and if you type the keyword later, you'll be eligible for that ticket giveaway that we'll do at the end of the show, Ali. So red or black, let's get them involved. Let's pick our second picks and, and let's get the audience some tickets today, guys. Thank you for being here. We got it. We got a big one today. This is a, this is a fun final table for sure.
And truly a privilege, by the way, for you and I working together the first time since our ambassadorship was announced here on GG to deliver this content to literally all corners of the globe, as we learned after I called out to kind of find out where everyone is from. It is just tremendously diverse, really mirroring our final table, so to speak. I know we have two players representing Holland, but just look at the diversity and the popularity of poker worldwide, as we see pair versus pair here, blind versus blind, advantage of Akirov with the ace. 10 would have been a real spicy one on the turn for Wall, who is now drawing to just one of two remaining threes. And that is a red flop. I will be selecting first. Is that so? We're good to go. We're live on the draft. Go ahead. We're, I'm going to take, I'll go with Wall, man. He's got chips. He's got yeah. Moxie. Boom. Who do you got? I don't blame you. You know, I'm torn between uh, that sense that the Dutchmen have such a strong fundamental uh, commitment to poker. They play a lot online. Uh, they've got a lot of experience. And then Hyun Sub Kim. So I, I think for my first pick, I'll go ahead and take. I'm going to take, take Kim, man. I, you know, look, the stack sizes are not that far apart. I do just think that Kim is going to be the kind of guy. It's a little riskier pick, I think, than Desmet, but he's going to be the kind of guy that's going to go feast or famine, and I'm willing to, to take that chance because he could spin it up real fast and be a force to be reckoned with. So he'll be my first pick, the Singaporean hints of Kim. Uh, red or black this time, Jeff, you call it. Um, well, I want, we could keep, we could do that or we could just go just snake. Oh, just draft. stay. Okay. okay. Yeah. 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 I pick black, you pick red. We'll stick with that throughout. No, I'm saying let's, we'll just snake draft it. Like now I pick, then you pick, we'll just go. Oh, okay. Was, okay. Like, Perfect. Start. No problem. So no problem. I'll take, I'll take the Dutchman then. I like, I think, uh, yeah, I like your pick. Actually, I was going to go Kim myself. So nice play, okay. but I'll take, I'll take the Dutchman. All right. I ran an interference on you there. So if you are going to take the Smet, I am going to now turn to, uh, Man, Vyakis' stack is tempting, and I, I do really like what I've seen out of him so far. Um, so I'll take him. I'll take Tapio Vyakis at $162 million. Uh, You know, I think if the stacks were a little bit closer, I'd consider Diago. Uh, but uh, it's the disparity is just a little bit too big with the blinds at 4 and $8 million to pick somebody sitting on 93 as we see King-Queen turn into two pair on the ace-high board. Stragunish does pick up the lone flush draw on the turn. So, so far, I have Yun Suk Kim and Tapio Viakas. So, my number two pick, Viakas, along with your number two pick, Dismet. If either of those players win, then we're going to have a little something in store for the stream. Yeah, they get a bonus. They're going to get 50 no matter what if they hit the thumbs up and get the keyword later to have an option. But if one of our second places win, we'll double that up to 100. And then I'm going to take the Brazilian, man. You know I'm biased to Brazil, so I, I got love for Brazilians. I'm going to pick Diago there for my third pick. I think it's a great pick. Uh, I think really for me, uh, it's a bit of a no-brainer in in terms of the you know remaining stacks. Uh, I'm going to go with Vincent uh on off of the 118 million and off of kind of what i've seen so far as well it would just be such a stretch to pick stragoonish at this point uh you know he's just sitting with that 30 million needs too many spins not an indictment of him or his play whatsoever i think he would pick vincent if he was in this spot as well ace queen suited though and might something be happening good luck being issued by vincent and by abakirov as well as the King Queen turns into a Broadway draw, dominated pre against the Ace Queen, which is top pair so far, so good on the turn. And the river is a clean three of spades for Stragoonish, and he avoids elimination. Mark Wall looks like he was in there as well. What uh, happened he just, there? He flashed the jack of clubs. What was that about? He's just showing off the functionality, the beauty of GG Poker, showing you can show yes. one card, and and that yeah. that was it. He wasn't in, but he was. He's, he had a relevant card. That's all he was He saying. was blocking was that Broadway gutty. So uh, giving yes. Stragunas a little bit of uh, relief there after the fact. King, queen, now four wall. He opens uh, with a, doesn't open rather, he three bets. And notice that Viaka is very respectful. King, queen of his own decides he doesn't want to tussle. And this is kind of the power of that big stack. And I do think that there is a lot of respect that is developing here for wall and his game. Uh, let's face it. We're all very impressionable. I think. A lot of us do have a sense of the parts of the globe from which a lot of poker talent tends to emerge and a lot of commitment to the game uh, is well established. And uh, Holland is uh, among those. Who are some of the better Dutch players that come to mind uh, for you? We've got some on the uh, on the Triton tour that might be worthy of, uh, of bringing up. 
uh, Jeff, obviously the legendary Lex Veld, who's uh, such a prolific streamer uh, on Twitch, foremost, uh, you know, personality in that realm uh, and has been for so long. Also a part of the booth brethren, as I like to call it, people who, who are part of, uh, you know, commentary for poker. Uh, he comes to mind going even further back, Marcel, Marcel Luce, the Flying Dutchman, Noah Boken, going back even further. Who else comes to mind uh, out of Holland? Yeah, Marcel Luce, Kian Mulder, who did, I believe, yeah. win the Cyprus event at Triton, one of the ones we were there. They won one, two, the Dutchman, uh, in that particular event. So they, they, they have been playing strong and some great players coming out of, out of Holland. And I guess uh, Jort Van Hoof, I believe, main event final table has got 5.7 million in earnings. So he's actually number one all time on the Netherlands list. So some very strong players from this country, of course. Let's not sleep on Tom Vogel saying, by the way, he's kind of shown up as a force of late. On yes. the Triton tour, kind of made a, a real impression on uh, on me. I know uh, certainly he's not flying under your radar either, as we see the three bet. Understandably, always looks a little suspect on the button when the late position raise comes in, but it was very legit from Hyunsook Kim there with the ace queen. Onward we march, and an ace king for Vincent would rate to get through here as Wall raises it up up front, but. Just because it's up front doesn't necessarily mean it's great when you're coming off of a stack as deep as wall and we presume that he's going to be very active and that's going to have a lot to do with why Vincent sized the way that he did with this ace king. He's saying, listen, buddy, you're not going to get any cheap spins against me. You want to do it, you're going to have to pony up. So a yes. big three bet there. Yes, shipped it all and big, big time in the tournament. Some stacks kind of consolidating. We see no one really that short at the bottom now with that double from Ritus. We see 82 million, 100 for the Brazilian just hovering over that. That, that 100 mil is such a big chip stack, but no one's super short right now. So things are jumbled up. There's a, there's a lot to play for and the ICM is absolutely peaking right now. This is a very, very important time of the tournament. No question about it. As we play 2.5 million, 5 million, and you see just how quickly your stack begins to be whittled away in terms of big blinds. Let's not forget, sizable annies need to be ponied up as well. So if you start to whittle away too short, you're really doing yourself a disservice. You got to draw a line in the sand, take a stand at some point. Although, of course, if we were to consult Phil Helmuth, perhaps, Jeff, good friend of yours, a guy you've played plenty with, you might have some different theories on whether or not you can really milk the heck out of a super short stack. We've seen him do it. It goes against a lot of the, the wisdom and the zeitgeist out there right now, but the results don't lie. He's got more bracelets than anybody else, truly an MTT specialist. And, you know, while a lot of it happens in no limit, hold him, he's won bracelets outside of those borders as well. And, you know, love him or hate him. You're always going to be talking about him. That is for sure. As uh, Abakirov with the King Jack offsuit gets through the button and the small over the Stragoonish, suited, connected, unintrusive, but nevertheless decides he isn't going to want to defend and wants to get in there with something a little bit stronger. Yeah, he's got a lot to risk by calling, but also a big differentiator there is if Mark were opening, he could maybe call because he realizes his hand is just so wide, but the player opening one spot earlier with that stack, it's going to be a much tighter range. So he's just going to run into jacks and tens and queens a lot more often. So it's just even less attractive to go, go flatting and try to hit a miracle flop. So I think that was a part of the decision. And here we saw actually, Ali, it was very interesting hand earlier. The ace three off folded in the big blind for less chips with a bounty opportunity. The right, right has got the king eight off through, if we remember. So right is really making some timely shoves, getting better hands to fold and staying alive in the game. And actually I got a pick left and I'm going to exercise that on right. And that okay. will leave you at the, our final player who is actually been, you know, he's Kubanya sitting, check you know. Off, yeah. I, more so I didn't want to pronounce it, Ali. I was, that was bigger. <laughs> that was the, I, I take the little less chips, let you nail the pronunciation and we're, we're, we're good. We got our team set. You guys at home are sweating for an extra 50, but again, we welcome you to hit that thumbs up and then be entered into the giveaway for a chance for a 50 or a hundred dollar ticket at the end of the stream today. So please good luck to you. And either way, get, there will be something for somebody today. Kim, not in the mood to defend against Desmet there, blind versus blind as he releases, but moves over to Timo.
Yeah, we are we are seeing Mark kind of hasn't quite got to just get completely loose. He was sort of running away, had the adversity with the Kings to Queens, as you mentioned. Fortunate in a lot of ways that it was just a 60 million stack at that point. So he's still back kind of where he started the day. And here we go. He is he's getting getting a little spicy as we see some some playable hands, though. Don't think he's gonna get to just run this particular pot over it'll be interesting with this 40 million so that's now diego with a big decision but didn't think long they say think long think wrong he got out of the way and that's it so we'll see mark not much he can do there with the ace five gonna put it in the muck nice pick up there for kim got himself at 235 million which is currently good for second place in chips behind the chip leader coming in mark wall looks like we are Moving on to our first break of our coverage today, a little under five minutes for you to maybe step out, hit the bathroom, grab a little something to drink, do what you got to do. It's also going to be an opportunity for Jeff and I to take a quick breather. Certainly hope you're enjoying today's coverage of the 2022 World Series of Poker Online event number seven, the Million Dollar Bounty. Don't go anywhere. There's any more action still to come after this. Keep it close.
And welcome back to continuing coverage of event number seven of the 2022 World Series of Poker Online Edition presented by GG Poker. It is the mystery bounty final table where we have only one casualty so far in the first frame. And that, of course, was Alexei Soltsnev, uh, who had the shortest of the stacks coming in, did have $42,000 in bounty money to go along with the $34,870 that he collects courtesy of ninth place Money forty six thousand five hundred dollars currently on tap for eighth place one point two million plus still remaining to be collected in this massive prize pool a two hundred dollar buy in event blinds currently at two point five and five million and our chip leader was the man who was a chip leader coming in he has been northbound since Mark Wall from the Netherlands the short stack at present belongs to Rytus Strigunish of Poland, just a few clicks back of Kubanyacek Abakirov, who is representing Kyrgyzstan. Pocket eights to start things back off for Diago Ferreira on the button, a legitimate open. Takes it down, and here we go, Jeff. Back in this the saddle. Is, this, is, this is exciting. This is like, you know, we saw the early knockout. We're at eight, and the payouts are starting to get really spicy. I mean, it's, it's all spicy for $200, but we are going to start seeing, and we're talking about the weekly Super Millions, as 250, 260 in that range, 350 for a $200 buy-in. That is insane. And we are getting to witness it here today. And, and also these bounty sweats going to start getting exciting too on the all-ins. 16,000 available still in mm -hmm. this eight, eight remaining chess. That's right. Smallest of the bounties remaining, $110. Certainly nothing that would motivate anybody to make a call they wouldn't otherwise. 16000 with, you know, 46000 in prize money. Still something to think about, but of course, more important is the ICM. Let's not do anything we wouldn't otherwise with a 16 k bounty out there, but 348000 available to first place. And let's, of course, not forget a very real, very tangible, you can sink your teeth into it, World Series of Poker Bracelet, hand-packed, delivered to your door, part of 33 total events that we are going to be hosting here on GG Poker, uh, part of this online World Series of Poker. Not far removed from the summer where we saw tremendously big fields post-pandemic, people coming back to Las Vegas, playing live, and, you know, the, uh, the thirst and the appetite for poker is real, and it is back in full force, Jeff. It is. It is. And there's a lot of events left. As we said, the main event, we will be doing that final table as well. But right now there's so much to play for. So many events available and so many of those bracelets still can be mailed to your home. But right now someone's going to get it. Eight left in this tournament. Of course, Mark has the podium. He's got a big position. He's got a big lead. He's going for, of course, the bracelet. But I mean, look at that top three money, Ali. 196,000 all the way up to 348. Of course, everyone eyeing that. Big, big scores, but a lot, a lot of, lot to play for. Very exciting moments here that we are going to see to come. And we haven't seen anyone be afraid. I think Rytus has really gotten the most aggressive. All the close spots that were to push or take it, he's done it. We saw Tapia with the Queen Jack suited. If you remember when we saw Mark defend the Queen Jack of clubs and make that bluff, he had a chance to jam on an open and the cutoff that would have worked. He passed on that. And, um, you know, some players going for it, some sitting back, but ultimately everyone's got a strategy of plan and we're getting to see how they execute today. On the button, the Aussie, Vincent. Yeah, we got. Did they give Timo a walk there. Is that what I just saw? Uh, yeah. I mean, that's allowed. It's not not often, but it is allowed. It's also allowed to hit the thumbs up. We got eleven hundred and fifty people join us right now. See that number keep climbing. I'll leave the giveaway is active $50 minimum hundred dollars. If it's one of our second draft picks for our dinner bet uh, to the, to the stream. So please guys, I know, you know, if you like the stream, if you like what's happening, if you got it, you got it's just, if you're having a good time, hit the thumbs up. We appreciate it. it. helps the algorithms and we got more content coming for you on GG poker. Of course, there, there is still, as you said, 23 bracelet events available after this event concludes. So a lot, a lot of events still available to play for. No doubt about it. As we see a three bed coming from Stragunish, by the way, a massive commitment, very real, putting 40 million out there off of his stack size and doing it against the chip leader. You know, those are tricky waters, but uh, he gets it through. So a little bit of fight coming out of the Polak. Yeah, really, really been showing a willingness to go for it like, time and time again. The one hand that was, I'd like to look at that ace three fold for the 
blind on blind, Ali. That was really close earlier. And now I see right it's getting a little more dangerous. That's one of those things where you make a close fold for the for price, kind of gets more expensive now. When he's jamming that 82 million into your 158, it was a lot different. I think it was like 40 when he had 220. So this getting more expensive and right is getting more dangerous as this tournament has progressed. Yeah. No doubt about it. Beautiful flop here for Wall, by the way. Two overs in the spade draw against the defense from Ferreira. Out of the big, obviously, any time that you decide to do that, hand like queen four, here you are with bottom pair. And it's a little bit tricky. Board texture doesn't feel like it's the type that's supposed to hit the early openers, but we know Wall's range is going to be wider than most, given that he's got that big stack and really has shown a willingness to be active. So note that despite flopping the pair, the texture was deemed unfavorable for Ferreira. And it takes a lot of discipline, Jeff. You start to tell yourself, if I'm going to defend the big blind and I'm going to flop a pair, which is, let's face it, hard to do, am I really going to make the habit of just check folding? And if I am, should I be defending? Yeah, this is, uh, this is definitely a great question and something that every player has different perspectives on and different motives and incentives and here we see the under the gun with the min raise ace three of clubs uh tapio has a has a defendable hand he does and look at this now ace three suited gonna likely benefit from a nice pie i mean really nothing for tapio to, to do even a small bet should just take this down and there's one you, that's your last draft pick uh, uh, but he's he's fighting man he's he's at 100 flat he's sitting nice yeah Sort of a free roll for me as both of those players are part of my draft picks. Of course, my second draft pick, which is probably all anybody in the chat cares about, is Tapio Viacas. Good for 2x as far as the giveaway is concerned. $100 if either myself or Jeff's picks, uh, number two picks in our draft come through. Timo Desmet, of course, Jeff's number two pick. So therein lies, I think, the bulk of the rooting interest in the chat as we see Wall. At the new blind level of three million at six million, a min raise under the gun with King Jack, and immediately runs into a three bet. And this texture is very relevant to both of these hands: Ace Queen, top pair, Broadway Gutty, same Broadway Gutty for Mark Wall, but second pair, good kicker with the King for him, as he will go with the flow of play. Yeah, this Checks is it. And a check back here from Vincent Jeff. Talk to me. It's deception. It's also pot control. It is also just one of those things where there are some hands that you could be in trouble against, but he's got the perfect situation here. He has got top pair with a gut shot and he's blocking the nuts and Mark also with a pretty nice hand with mid pair and same situation kind of reverse. So now Vincent decides, look, two checks. I got, I, I want to protect my hand. I want to go for a little value. I think I have the best hand pretty, pretty comfortably. So he is going to go ahead with a, 33% pop bet. And let's see what Mark does here. I mean, this is, this is tough, right? This is, there's still a lot of options. I think all three options available here. Note that wall is respectful of Vincent's three bet here, despite the fact that Vincent checked back. And we know that some of that check back would come from maybe an under pair, but perhaps wall thinking to himself, how likely would Vincent be giving the ICM implications to kind of three bet my early open with an under pair to a 10? Wouldn't he be more likely to set mine? Um, so really, you know, some, some things to consider here, nothing to consider for Hyun Sub Kim with Ace King suited, of course. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a nice pot. I mean, look at Vincent now he has found himself. It looks it to be in third and our other Dutchman who has sort of, I don't want to say dropped down, but he's lost a decent bit of his stack. I think he started the day very healthy and now he's, he's still okay, but 156, not really going the right direction for him. But Vincent is up to 168, super healthy, feeling good about that last pot. Very important pot. And, and on the topic of feeling good, look at this flop. It is top pair with a queen kicker for Mark Wall, who defended from the big with his queen seven, but it is two overs and the nut flush draw for Hewn Sub Kim. Follows through, gets called. Ten of diamonds on the turn, doesn't help either player. And now crunch time as look Ooh. at this river. There is... Perhaps none spicier in the deck. The seven of clubs, the only one that would come to mind. Mark, queens up, but for Hyun Sup Kim, the nuts with the clubs. 64 million in the middle, and this could be the biggest pot we've seen thus far. Yeah, this is, this is, uh, I mean, the, the thing is, though, Mark goes for the sizing, and instead of like betting a bet and then getting raised, now, though, when he gets, the, gets raised, Mark just made such good decisions the whole time. 
pretty sure he's gonna he's gonna be able to get away from it. But that's a healthy bet, Ali. Seventy eight million over bet in- of seventy eight point five million into sixty four point seven. Why the over bet? Is it to try to make it look weaker? I think honestly, I think it's more that he just feels that his opponent is gonna have a pretty good hand here and he just thinks he's going to get paid and then in the in the event of this let's say he had bet 40 or, oh my goodness wait what wait, just happened? they both got it all in they both got it all in incredibly hyunso put the raise in and mark wall jammed it on him perhaps the tank left wall thinking that his range did not include hands that would beat queen seven there. I really don't think that there's a whole heck of a lot that once you three that is going to call and not beat queen seven. And suddenly a massive reversal of fortune. Jeff, look at those stacks. I need a second because, I mean, we talk about misreading. I, I just, I don't understand. Mark's played like flawlessly. He's aggressive. He's playing good. But how I don't know how he could raise with that situation. I get calling, okay, maybe his opponent's bluffing with the ace blockers. But to re-raise seems... Wild. I mean, that was wild hand, Ali. That I did not expect. And there's st- Is there a cigarette that just got lit up there in front of Mark Wall. I don't blame him. My goodness. Wow. 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 That was that's the hand of the day. I don't care. Put that in the highlight reel. That was absolutely epic and unreal. Absolutely unbelievable hand. I mean, listen, fortune favors the bold. We've heard it before, but there is an argument to be made, especially when you have the opportunity that Mark Wall had in front of them to not get too reckless. And sometimes I think we can be guilty as we see Vincent out turn Mark, who might be a little shell shock right now, Jeff, with the pair of deuces betting 6 million into 18, just a third pot. Uh, we kind of can get guilty of like feeling swaggy, feeling like we're, you know, in the zone, we're, we're impenetrable. Nobody can kind of, you know, step to us who would dare beat us in a pot. And oh my God, this is just what the doctor ordered for Wall. He gets wow. there on the river with trip deuces. And is he going to get paid by Vincent? As he bets 37 and a half million, another over bet, mind you, the same type that he put in just a pot ago against Hyun Sup Kim to leave him with under a hundred million as it stands right now. Vincent has more than enough to bluff catch him here. The straights didn't get there, Jeff. The flushes didn't get there. And obviously he looks like he might be shell shocked and looking to force a hand through. Yeah. Uh, good, lay Mark, down. good lay down and nice, nice recovery for Mark. He got in there with the ace deuce and he is look at the stacks. Now Ali, 142 for Mark 152 for Vincent and 155 for, for Timo, the, the other Dutchman. So things are tight. Things have shifted and look at your man, Kim running a 440 million. What a, that was, that was one of the wilder hands I've seen in a long time and just unexpected too. Like what, what do you think's going, what do you think Mark was doing there? You, you just like, I don't know. Like it was like he thought he had a boat or something. It was, it was like, I just, I don't know. No, don't there's know no happened. pair on the board. He knows he doesn't have a full house. I think he just fell prey to just deciding like, I've got the best hand here. He's got an over pair. That's where I'm pinning him. I'm going to do something that makes it look like I'm bluffing. Uh, you know, as we see another ace king suited, the very same man uh, in terms of uh, composition that, that left Hewins up with this big 462 million chip pot raise and take it for Tapio. I really do think it was just the moment for Mark Wall, you know, getting the better of him. Maybe it happens. You know, like I said, I, I just think about feeling like you are invincible feeling like you have this big stack, everybody, you know, he can't call. Think about the ICM. It's impossible. You know, uh, I can get a small flush to fold. Things like that getting into your head and then you make these big plays and it just doesn't work out. And now 140 million, certainly, you know, it's enough to, to recover over 20 bigs, but my goodness, it's a far cry from the 350 plus that he was sitting on not long ago. And for Hyun Sub Kim, Jeff, talk to me about playing with 449 million in front of you when second place in chips is Mark is Vincent now with 150 million. I mean, you have three to one over the next biggest stack. Look at your man, Kim. I say your man because he's on your team for your draft pick, but he is he's he's exercising a spot here where he has six seven, right? He knows this player doesn't have it. If he doesn't have an overpair, he's gonna fold. He happens to have it. Says he's got to take his take his shot there. And uh, well, nice play 
nice pickup. And I, I like both players. I like, I like the plays by both players here, but Kim takes a shot, maybe a little bit big, right? He bet big sizing to bet and then fold. Um, it's a bit big in my opinion, almost to the, fo- to the fact where you start looking at the math and he's like, Oh, if I have a six, I have running diamonds and ACE might be good. Um, I, I don't know. Is he talking himself into a call? He does Ali. Yeah. He's going to take his chances with backdoor diamonds and a gut shot. The ACE would work as well. Abakirov going to get a spin here. The turn is clean. What about the river? Ooh. It's clean as well as he pairs the seven. And uh, Abakirov giving us some emojis to walk us through his emotional state of mind. He jumps up to 181 million as those Mark Wall bucks are redistributed in turn to Abakirov, at least a, a quotient of them as we see Diago. Gonna wake up with two queens in the big blind. Abakirov feeling it, ace five suited, opens as things are starting to get hot here at the final table in event number seven. Million dollar mystery bounty. Yeah, wow, wow. That was, I mean, the bounties again, 110 is like a good, out, like is a potential bounty available. So some, play, some people in the chat are talking about going for the mystery bounty. Of course, it's exciting. Of course, it's a chest. You get the key, you open it up. It's exciting, but this is, there's no million dollar available. There's no 400K available or 90,000 plus bounty available. So the bounty aspect of it at this particular moment, the chips are so valuable. There's so much money up top. I think that, you know, uh, it's possible that he's that he really wanted the bounty, but I just think that was an aggressive play, Ali. Even for our friend Kim, that was on a, an aggressive side uh, yeah. that we've seen. I'm a little shocked by that sizing, committing himself, and then calling it off. You know, maybe uh, having that big stack, you know, kind of can get to you from time to time. A uh, bit of a responsibility, of course, having the big stack. When you're on the short stack, things become a little bit easier. You don't have as many choices, not as much uh, decision making, perhaps. So we see Viakas with a very dusty Jack Dew smelling over whether or not to call this virtual min bet or min raise rather from Desmet, who we haven't heard much from of late, kind of sat back and watched a lot of the fireworks from the sidelines. Yeah. You know, another, uh, another consideration, by the way, Jeff, before we overlook it is the fact that this is not a table of all professional poker players. There are some guys out here, a $200 buy-in, a very approachable size, who maybe this is the biggest stage they've ever been on. In fact, it's quite likely. And if that's the case, pressure can maybe get to you. Uh, a lack of experience can maybe get to you. Uh, but it is cool to see because it creates some really interesting dynamics, some unexpected things. So on the edge of your seat, pop your popcorn and uh, buckle up for the long haul as Jeff and I are looking forward to bringing you the Run throughout, right down to a champion, $348,000 and a bracelet going to be going to the winner here in event number seven, the million dollar bounty of the 2022 World Series of Poker online presented by GG Poker. Jack nine turning into a gut shot on the 873 two spade board, just two overs for the Hawkins. Uh, can we give a little respect to the Jack Deuce there, Ali? You see that three bet? Jack Deuce off, he just took it upstairs, got a six suited to fold too. So Tapio showing a little moxie in willingness to go for it in a nice spot and put the, the Dutchman in a tough spot. I'd say Tino's been conservative, right? If you're watching the stream and you see that he's folding blind on blind, the ace three off, I think that that would be you know, maybe a, maybe a, a note made from Tapio, an adjustment, an in-game situation there, decided to, to kick it up and put some pressure on with a really, you know, a, a gapper, an offsuit gapper, Jack Deuce off. So well done. It would appear, uh, based on the chat, that uh, some people have some insights onto Mark Wall's presence at the table, the chip leader coming in. Shout out to DB, who says he qualified with a satellite. So the parlay is even bigger than it is for the average person if we were to, we're not vetting the veracity of these claims, but uh, presuming that the chat is not guiding us in the wrong direction as we see a pair of jacks out flopping the two tens for Vihakis in this three-way affair. Coincidentally, Hyunsuk Kim needs a 10 to have that Broadway come in, what a card that would be. Two checks in front of Viakis with the two overs here in the three-way pot. I do think that we could see some check back, but instead he's going to stab for 11 and a half million. Ask the question into 45. Hyun Sub's call here should be of some concern to Viakis, but note that that bet did clear the pair of jacks of wall, which was the best hand, leaving Viakis with the best hand. So nice maneuvering there for him. Two checks on the turn when the eight rolls off. And now the deuce 
Very dry run out, Jeff. Will Kim try to turn it into a bluff? No, no, not no pair. Deemed to have too much showdown equity, perhaps. And it is checked all the way down. So nice there for Viakas as the Finn picks up a 68 million chip pot. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's amazing the game of inches, right? It's a, it's a little things and players so many calculated moves. And as you just said, that was a huge swing, right? To get the best hand to fold, you get the guy with the, the a good hand but doesn't have you beat to be in. And you know, again, Tapio is just like you know those little moves, Ali. The jack deuce off three bet instead of fold to lose your big blind and Annie. Instead, you pick up chips, keep your big blind and Annie, get through the blinds. And now he's at 190, looking very, very healthy and dangerous. I mean, he is in a second place with uh, with that maneuvering. So well well played from Tapio. And so Kim off of Queen Jack suited, the open. Take it down, sir. We talked about it during the draft portion there, Jeff. My choice to take Hyun Sub Kim when Timo De Smit was available, had been playing in a manner that suggested that he is going to be snug and, and uh, you know, proficient here, uh, was sort of tethered around the fact that we could see this gunslinger spin it up. And indeed he did, obviously, Mark Wall, who really didn't rate to be the man to indulge him in the spin, ended up being the one to pass a big stack over to him. But here he is. 373 million off of the high water mark, but certainly still a force to be reckoned with, as we see Abakirov forcing an ace eight upon the pocket threes of Yakis, which uh, look like they might have crumbled under the pressure. But look at this monotone five three deuce all heart board middle set for Viakas. That's what he was after. But for Abakirov, he's got the gutty for a wheel, and he's got the only flush draw. Good for a, for a follow through bet of 19.35 million. And is Viakis going to press now? Wow. The answer is yes. Press away. Putting Abakirov to the test. And boy, that ace eight shrivels quick, doesn't it? Uh, it does. It does. And it's amazing to flop the set. It's amazing to be at 250 million. When you're playing for a two hundred dollar buy and three hundred forty eight thousand of top, and our man is on a run right now, don't look away. Tapio is here to play, and this is uh, Timo. I think also hasn't really got felt in. Here we go. He gets a big pair here, and he does get some action in front of him. But he's sort of gone the wrong direction. The Dutchman came in one two. They're sort of slipping away in some senses, and it looks like there could be some violence here on the countrymen. And this is going to be a you know Mark just sort of getting a little frustrated. That's a that's a playable hand. Ace-9 suited deemed unplayable as Mark will concede to the two queens. Presumably a good decision, though we'll never know based on the flop. King-Queen offsuit should be the opener here, although we're paused on Vincent with this baby-suited connector. Does put it into the mud. Shagunish, 52 million, currently the shortest stack. Wouldn't be surprised to see him jam it, and indeed, that's exactly what he does. Yeah, this guy's timing has been impeccable. This time, though, I mean, Diago, honestly, ICM-wise, this is this is this is just probably going to work for Rytus again. Ace ten off is a strong hand. Why well, does call? It's very close. We're gonna. This is a huge pot. Huge Drawing moment. a line in the sand, and the Ace ten turns into top two pair, but it's an all heart board. Wow, he's praying. No good. Is there a heart on the river or a jack? Ooh. No, the deuce of clubs, the driest of all rivers. And we have our second casualty of the final table. It will be Rytus Strigunish, who gave it a valiant effort, was patient, was disciplined. But in the end, he is only going to be able to try to collect 16K in bounty money. 3,100 will be the official number, bringing him to just shy of $50,000 upon elimination. 46.5 in total coming in. He had a little bit of bounty money under his belt already. In fact, it was about uh, a little over 4,000 that he had collected so far. So for dessert, a little extra 7K, not going to hurt. Nice parting gift for him as we continue here, seven-handed. Yeah, seven. Took a while to lose one from the original quick knockout. We've seen it. And this is, again, as the blinds go up, the stacks, the amount of big blinds consolidate, and it just kind of goes through waves in tournaments. And right now, we do see that there are some shorter stacks relative to the blinds. We should see some big action coming up. And 
Big call there, Ali. Ace 10, not an easy call. I think if you were to plug that in a vacuum, that's what you're going to see. You're going to see low pairs. You're going to see the king, queen, queen, jack. That's a, that's a big risk to take because mm-hmm. that's a huge part of Diego's stack there, right? That was a, that was a, that was a ballsy call. And he was right. Yeah. He was ahead yeah. and he still, still had to hold and quite a sweat with that three heart Broadway flop. And it's such an intrusive hand, right? I know you block the kings, you block the queens, you block the ace kings and ace queens. But as you know, there's still three other queens and kings available in the deck. And a lot of times those ace queens, ace kings and big pairs do show up. So he took his chances and did have a good sweat. But unfortunately for Stragunish, it was the end of the road. As we see Diakis having flopped the open ender, taking initiative on the turn when the board does pair and this met showed some disinterest to fire and take it down after defending his big blind. Here he is with ace 10 off suit. See if he'll be allowed to open or if Diago would be the opener on the button. Instead, look at Hyun Sub Kim. I'm starting to think that very first hand of the afternoon, Jeff, where he over called an open raise up front with six, four off suit was definitely not a misclick. Obviously situations have changed. You can play a wide variety of hands as the chip leader right now, put a lot of pressure on those middling stacks. But really, with the departure of Stragoonish, the landscape does change and the middling stack concept has sort of disappeared as really it's Viakis with 260, well behind the 350 for Kim, and then everybody else in a fairly tight cluster. So maybe not going to be able to exploit the ICM pressure like he would have otherwise if there was a very short stack out there. Timo DeSmet, 12 million to go. Min raise open off of the two nines. Ace Jack is a customer. Nice texture for DeSmet. Seven, six, five, two hearts over pair and a gutty. Yeah, uh, this is a very interesting board. Tapio really starting to exert his stuff here. Playing post-flop. Going to put some hands such as ace queen or ace king in a really tough spot here. Nines though, with the gut shot and overs, imagine can't go anywhere, but this is a uncomfortable position for Timo. And look at this, gets the jack right on the turn, a, an electric card. Actually, one of the, the more nice cards for Tapia, right? The ace, he's going to jump in the lead, but it's going to really slow down Timo. But the jack, kind of kind of a middling one. That's a tough one when you see resistance here and get a bet. You know, if you're Timo, you'd realize you could be getting getting got by folding. Sizing, Ali. What do you go with sizing here? I mean, it's a very wet board. I would imagine it's a, it's either a check or a big bet, and he does check. Yeah, you saw the check back from Viakis, and the backdoor space showing up along with the king and the nines, which may have otherwise sought a little bit of value, I think are going to tread lightly, and that's indeed what DeSmet does, checking once more. But Viakis' value could be available here, Jeff. Ace-jack, a lot of hand, it feels like. You know, the, the this player... This card, the king, queen, or an ace, king, definitely available. And I don't know if he is going to go for a value, but he could for sure. He definitely a very reasonable thing you could do. Doubt you'll get raised, right, without the having a stone cold nut. So you could suss out 14, 15, 18, mm-hmm. try to get paid by a hand such as 10s or 9s. Although it's kind of hard. What are you getting called by, too? So ultimately it does check. Showdown for Viakis, The win on the turn as his six outer. Binked. And for DeSmet, that's a little bit disappointing as he is now hovering down around 100 million. Same territory that Abakirov and Mark Wall, the chip leader coming in, find themselves in right now. King Queen offsuit on the button, raise impending. You think Vincent's going to be his gangster with Jack Deuce out of the big blind as, uh, as we saw earlier? Out of, uh, uh, was it Viakis or Ferreira? I can't remember. Tapio, Tapio gave us that yeah. Jack Deuce. It really catapulted him into momentum. And again, there's so much about getting these bets through, especially when you don't have hands, right? Because then when you get hands, people see it, they're confused. You might get some extra action, but also just the swing of chips, as we said, to not lose your big line and your big line Annie and pick up the chips from an open is, is really powerful. And I mean, Tapio is gotta be, I think the pick to win in my book right now, there's, even though there's seven left, the momentum and the, the willingness to play with modest hands and put people in tough spots. I really like how he's playing and he has got the chips to back it up, basically tied to the chip lead. Nothing too sexy out there right now. Nevertheless, to Smet sticking his neck out of touch. Oh, sorry. He's in the big blind right now. <laughs> my fault.
Nine off suit. Gonna jam it. Nice pickup there for Vincent. Is yeah. that what the charts say to do, uh, Jeff? Uh, there's been some, there's been some chart stuff that's been close. There's been some out of the box charts and our man Kim is definitely not on the GTO only style of play, but, um, you know, I, I think we've seen a, a wide variety. I've been surprised cause I thought there's been some like absolutely world-class maneuvers and plays. And I've also seen some stuff where I'm just like, wow, that is like really out there. So it's been a, it's been a mix. And as you mentioned, Ali, when you get 51,000 entries and a $200 buy-in, especially for a mystery bounty format, that's so unique, so interesting, you're going to find people playing that are not, you know, grinding daily tournaments. So I, I think uh, we'll probably have a nice hybrid here. And we got a hybrid of a collision. This is a big, big interaction of hands and a huge pot. The writing was on the wall after Viakas opened a shove from Abakirov with the ace king needs an ace to Ooh. show up. And on the turn, he draws dead as the case king comes off the deck nobody can blame him for playing this pot the way that he did all of us would have done the same thing as Bakirov becomes our seventh place finisher sixty two thousand dollars going to him and running hot is a very fair way for tapio to be describing his last few orbits for Bakirov, an inconsequential extra or for viakas rather an inconsequential extra two hundred and sixty dollars Big, big pot. Look at Tapio, 468, man. This is a, this is a big stack now. He is going to, I think we're going to see him really exercise his, this, this show what he's, what he's going to do with that stack. And then you see the two Dutchmen on 90 mil and there it is, two eights going to jam. So this is a pickup for Timo staying above a hundred million, but it is, uh, there's two big stacks at the moment. And everyone else is really tight, Ali. This is a great opportunity for the big stacks to put pressure on. No doubt about it. Earlier, by the way, I incorrectly mentioned that Rydus was picking up the bounty money. Of course, the bounty money goes to the player who beats you. So that extra 3,100, in fact, went to the player that busted him and not the other way around. A little correction there. As we see Diago willing to limp in from the small blind with the big boss stack of the fin, Tapio Viakis, which is now well in front of Hyun Sub Kim, who enjoyed the chip lead briefly. But red hot is Viakis. The suited ace is going to put the pressure on Queen Deuce. Can do nothing but concede. Final tables. You've been there, Jeff. Such a momentum swingy kind of situation. And when you are running hot, when you have everybody else feeling like the guy's got it, it is important to try to leverage that. It, you're absolutely right. It is. It's a momentum game. And it is one of those things where when it's your time, it's your time. It's Right now, we see that this is Tapio's time. He is really going for it. He's really putting pressure on. And here we go with five do suited, blind on blind. He knows how often people miss, expect him to bet here. And he does just that. And look at this. He's just, he's on fire. Everything's working for him right now. Sure is. And that's really telling, by the way, Jeff, for me, that he would just take the five deuce of hearts and just take his shot. You know, you got enough chips to do it. The situation warrants it. And he recognizes that, and he is going to be a force to be reckoned with. We know that much. As we see Mark Wall drawing a line in the sand, moving all in. And as a result of doing that, he can shed the ace jack of Vincent behind him and the open of Hyun Soo Kim. Important pickup for him as he leaps up over 100 million. Yeah, this is uh, this this is getting down to it. As we see, there's six players left, guaranteed eighty-two thousand, and there it is—the raise and an all-in. And this is again, Tapio going to start opening really wide. Mark, I think we'd see shoving a lot wider than Ace Queen off, but of course, it's a very big hand, six-handed when the chip leader opens in this position and the cutoff, and then a shove. So this is. Uh, this oh is my god! Oh wow, Ace! Whoa! Oh, Ali, you, you okay. I, thought, I, thought, I was like, wait, I thought, I thought, I thought Tapio, I thought he called, didn't you? Um, I, I, I did. I, well, when you said, oh my God, yes, I did. I said, and I saw the cards up and it said the angle where it is. I really thought it was an, an all in, but Mark, great pickup. And they, I mean, I think we're going to see Tapio go ham here, man. And Kim's not afraid either. This could really get fun to watch these big stacks against these, these guys all have like the same stack. Really, it's 135, 120, 124, and 90 versus like the two outlier big stacks that are definitely on the aggressive side. So it should make for an interesting dynamic here. Vincent opens, 9-6 suited on the button. Desmet says not enough. Ace in the big six-handed action. 
relatively even stacks. Advantage Diago, how will he react? Just a flat. Yeah, yeah Queen, Queen 10, King. Five, beautiful for Vincent. Action checked over to him with top pair. Nine million plus is the follow through amount. Yeah, this is uh, this is crunch time, Ali. Six handed, big money. We can see this is actually a, a imagine two hundred dollar buy in. You don't play that often, or maybe it's a big buy in. Maybe it's not. Either way, this is a huge pay jump. Put over that century mark. I know a lot of great players, great streamers that don't have a hundred k score to their name. It's kind of one of those milestones in tournaments to hit a hundred k payday. So this is a big sweat. We see the bounties though. Some players. I think already have, you know, they, they got, they have good size bounties, but this is a, this is a big one. And, and look at the fifth to fourth, Ali, 40 or 37,000. It starts getting really, really, really spicy as we, as we start losing players, which is the, the case in, in tournaments. The payouts are so top heavy. I mean, we've got a $28,000 jump on tap right now, just from sixth to fifth, which is approaching ninth place money. As we see Jack six, four, giving bottom two pair to Mark wall in the big blind, nothing cooking for Viacus, but here he is again, probing. Yeah, this is this is a great, it's a great word. He is going to do a lot of probing with his stack. And this is the one that is not going to work out though. Mark actually deciding, do I want to take a trap? Do I just call with four, six? Maybe he's got a hand such as this that he could barrel off or go, or do you just raise? Because there's a lot of ICM on the line and maybe you get it in versus Jack X or such. Uh, I, I don't know. You could go both ways there. It's a vulnerable hand bottom two versus like a top two or top and bottom. So can't blame him for raising and, and a good pickup. Mark, man, it, it's a term Phil Lock coined, or at least that I understand up stuck. I never heard it before. Oh, yeah. Phil Lock. It's a true thing. Like Mark's got 150. He's not like critically short by any means, but when you have the chip lead nine handed and now you are in, Oh, it's sort of like tied for third. It doesn't feel quite as good. And this is a big part of poker, the mental aspect. Can you shake it off? Can you go hand by hand? Can you say it's a new situation, a new time? I have this stack now. I'm not the chip leader anymore. Um, that's not so easy, Ali. Easier said than done in the moment, in the heat of the battle and, and being, you can see it. You got a bracelet opportunity for uh, the story, the money, the, the all of it. And, and uh, it's live. Get whole cards up. You get to see it. Your friends get to see it. Your family get to see it. So a lot of could be a lot of pressure depends exciting or pressure however you look at it we're going to play to a winner it's a lot to play for creeping ever so close to crowning a champion six-handed three players already busted out here at the final table of event number seven tables were eight-handed up until the final table where we started nine-handed king nine suited going to jam it for Desmet as he will spin the wheel of course deuce five off suit never enough for Yunsuk kim to decide to give him that spin Ace King now on the button for Desmet. Yeah, this is not gonna just rip it. Nice, nice job. Some players would rip here. I do like that. I think that that isn't the threshold of strong enough to induce, and he does go for it. So Timo also showing some 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 willingness to to kind of gamble and induce in a spot where you can't fault people for shoving there either, Ali. It's a it's a big pickup. You still might get called by a worse hand. And if you get flatted by a hand that has a lot of playability, it's you're putting your tournament at risk with, with ace king on some particular board. So uh, I like that. I like that it raised a lot. And I wasn't sure what he would go with there. So good to see that he's willing to try to extract extra chips. Look at this. Diakas playing back at the open from Kim from the button. Kim showing up with a lot more hand than he would need to make this open. The two eights. And obviously at this point, he knows Diakas as the chip leader and an established competent opponent. Could be three betting with a variety of holdings. And this one happens to turn into top and bottom pair. On the ace 10 7 board, the only solace perhaps that those two over cards will leave these eights in a bad way. And facing a C bet of 35 million, how will Kim respond? He does have backdoor straight ability. Just a little too rich, indeed. Kim folds and Yakis adds to his chip lead.
Yeah, this is this is a this is a spot where we might actually start seeing some players just be able to open shove and put people at risk because of the ICM implications. We are, you know, five hundred million is a, is a real number, Ali. That's a that's a that's a healthy healthy number, and he has actually separated himself and kind of has the dream scenario unfolding where four of the remaining six have a, such a similar stack. I think it's the most fun in poker when you get to see this sort of dynamic where guys just start ha hammering because you see have to people have to make really big folds or, you know, in theory, in practice, supposed to. I don't know if we'll see that today, though. I don't know if these guys are going to be making those uh, hero folds or not, but either way, we're going to see this is this is the two big guys with big stacks and nice, mm -hmm. nice job by Tapio just to flat there. He decides also against a guy who Kim, who's not necessarily respecting ICM. He doesn't want to get in a spot like exactly this. Imagine they flip. He's got the chip lead. He's in control, and he's deciding to take it to a, a less violent and a vol volatile, we'll call it, situation. And and, and an interesting lead out. Yeah. From Kim. Note in doing so, he is able to draw a check post flop out of Kim on the king high flop and bink the ace on the turn. Now he's got way the best hand. Let me go for value. Top pair nut kicker. And 28 million, deem the right amount. And for Hyun Sub Kim at this point, we know we're just bluff catching with two jacks. Yeah, Tapio deciding to go for some value here. I mean, this is uh, this is interesting for Kim. I mean, he probably doesn't feel good about it. We saw, wow, he does call. Okay. Tapio, well done. Wonder what sort of hand he was putting Diakis on as a flat caller on the button. When that runout comes down, it does feel a lot like Fiakis could be there. He's clean, might be on the lower end of the spectrum with respect to hands that he could have. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm with you there. A light payoff. And again, this is now getting to be a real separation. Ali, 585 second, 212. He's got more than double second place. And he's got 5X a lot of these other guys stack. So this is starting to get to be a... A runaway and a6 suited all in now to ace queen timo spinning the wheel does have some chop outs here but his tournament life is on the line no good on the flop or the turn is there a five six or seven available no it's the ten of hearts and hyun Suk kim has eliminated timo Desmet in sixth place and that will cut the dutch contingent in half kim now going for his bounty is the 16K there? No, just $110 added to what Kim had coming in, which was 15,000. So a healthy haul already as we have our sixth place finisher, Timo Desmet, picking up. Yeah. Uh... $82,690. Yes, and T Tapio and, and Kim are the ones that are going to have the best opportunity, of course, for the knockouts with this big stack. Some of these other guys really, really hovering tight, and we are really shaping up potentially for this heads-up match. It would be quite a battle to see Kim heads up playing. He's already played so many hands. We saw him nine-handed playing four, six off and some other five-deuce open. So I think, you know, he would be fun to watch heads up, that's for sure. Let's see if uh, he can find his way there. Currently second with five left. So the Yaka's at 560 million, your chip leader, Kim, desperate to get back up on top of the mountain, 361 million, second in chips right now, as Yago deciding here in the new blind level, four and eight million, that it is time to dig in, all in, 95 million. And Tapio on the struggle bus, queen nine, not enough. Yeah, this is uh, this is about as even as you can get between two and five. Uh, sorry, yeah, two, so third, fourth, and fifth, Ali. 122, 110, 107. And mm -hmm. interesting, Diago going for it there. I think it's just the right pass to do it. Also realizing Tapio's not really incentivized. That could be 110 bounty. He's not looking to call off super light. Tapio's going to pick up a lot of putting pressure on people pre-flop. And that is great recognition. That's something I think a misconception sometimes players look at and they're like, oh, the big stack, I'm scared to shove, but they don't really want to call. They want to be the one putting the pressure on, getting uncontested pot. So really well played by the Brazilian, taking a risk there, right? Fifth versus third, for example, is, you know, it's a, it's a big jump, 86,000. And, and he's really tied in that third through fifth position. Jax for Hyun Suk Kim, once again, didn't fare so well against, uh, or actually it wasn't Kim who had the Jax. Was it against the ace queen of the Akis? Was it Timo? Or was it Kim? I can't remember now. 
It was Kim versus Tapio, Jack's ace queen. Okay. Where we okay. saw the pit. Yep. Bianca Snell. Min raise open with the pocket eights. Deuce four suited, and Kim's getting frisky. The five of spades does work on the queen queen five board, which is good texture for Viacas. Yeah, really, really nice flop for eights. Feeling very confident that your hand's good. Does decide to back for, bet for some protection. Doesn't want to give, you know, the random two cards, nine, 10, jack 10, that may, might call a free shot. So he does bet and pick it up and really, really impressed by top. Top it right now. He has got complete control and he's got <laughs> rockets, Ali. When it's working, it's working. We said it before, but that is that's a little much. Yeah, he's getting dealt in, no question about it. Obviously, don't imagine he's going to be getting any action here unless somebody decides to just get reckless. Boy, Kim, Kim keeps me on the edge of my seat, man. When I see his avatar blinking with 10-3 off suit, it's the only screen name that I, I think could just decide to do something nutty. But it's good to have that. He keeps the blood pumping, he ends up, Kim. Yeah, that's for sure. That is absolutely for sure. And look at this, Diago decides that, hey, I'm going to limp in blind on blind, that Tapio's not just going to auto put pressure on, and I do have some traps, so he does limp, and both players connect here, bottom pair, top pair. See if Tapio goes for a small bet. Makes sense. And now trip queens on the turn for Diago. A nice development, but the board oh so wet. Ferreira playing pot control, obviously off of this short stack. Now sub 10 bigs, he's going to want to tread lightly. For Biakas, this 22.5 into 45 million, exactly half pot. Ferreira calling once more. The ace of hearts shouldn't be too much of a concern. Of course, King 10 got there. Biakas snap check back with the eight, hoping perhaps that Ferreira have busted diamonds, not the case as we can see. So nice navigations there by the Brazilian as Vincent has something nice of his own. Pocket Ace is showing up yet again in this orbit. Min raise open. Both other aces are spoken for and both of them are present in the blinds. Tapio releasing his, as does Wall, Jeff. Wow, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's a welcome sight, uh, you know. It is uh, it is absolutely a delight to get aces any time of turn, especially when you're five-handed for a World Series of Poker bracelet. Just hoping your opponent has something, hoping to hold. And here we get the blind-on-blind -blind complication again, and Mark will pick it up. And we are we're moving, Ali. Blinds are up, actions up. We're starting to see some some potential all-ins coming pretty quick here off these stack sizes with eight million chips as the big line. Three of these players are definitely pretty much going to be moving in when they want to play. Pretty close to it. Mark Wall still has, has almost 20 blinds, though, so he's got a little play. Jack eight turning into second pair on the ace jack tray board. More than we can say for Hyun Soo Kim's seven high. Action checked over to him. Check back brings the deuce on the turn. All right, well, now Jack Vincent cuts his hand. Wheel gut shot for Kim. Does Kim ever, he just, he does peel here. Hmm. Uh, if checked to, he's got basically the worst hand he could possibly have. And Vincent can't feel amazing. Although it'll be interesting if he goes check and then it depends on the size. I don't know if Kim's got give up. You think he doesn't look like a give up guy to me, Ali, if he were to get checked to. But either way, Vincent does put out a 50% pot i'm sorry 50 percent of the pot bet and and kim i don't think in um it's an ambitious vicious ass to just ship it in here as a bluff uh, note that his screen name was flashing and both you and i wondered whether or not he was going to grab a cape and do something heroic he's clean suited on the heels of that pickup for vincent on the button a lovely hand a couple of three six off suits in the blinds do not rate to be interested in defending Confirmed. Yeah, this is uh, this is not a fun spot to be going into the chip leader. Although Kim deep enough here to be opening a bit wide, and he he's got the full wide. I'll tell you that this man has got the full range. He is not even in the ninety three or so. He is full. I think a hundred percent on the button. And look at that four do suited. 
opens it up and Tapio is going to defend neither player connecting as so often the case in no limit holding, but a queen on the turn, uh, kind of weakish top pair. could see a check from Tapio making a lot of sense. And will Kim decide to delay C bet? He does go for it, which we know won't work at least on the turn. Tapio certainly can continue with top pair. Having turned the best hand, Tapio checking on the turn with the coordinated board of five, six, seven, backdoor hearts, feeling better about a check call against Hyunsook Kim's range. Sizing a 45 million, not negligible into 68. And it does feel a little milky, but top pair deemed too much hand. Tapio certainly could afford to make the call, which he does and puts himself a little bit more distance between he and Hyun Sub Kim. Yeah, uh, I, you know, I think that's, uh, that is, that is a spot where he's not, he doesn't know. I mean, it's like the guy, Kim's just shown too much, too much bluffing, too much looseness. That I think that, you know, as you mentioned, it's not like a super fist pump spot to call, but as he sees, he does have the best hair. And, and he is over 600 million. And this is a spot where a jam just seems eminent. Uh, it's a perfect situation. You're going to get folds from a lot of decent hands. Players don't want to call off. The big blind has roughly the same stack. And this is an absolute master class at the moment going for Tapio. If he can finish this out, he is really extending his lead and, 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 and just, just playing great. 642 million in front of him now. And he is beginning to emerge as a dominant force that is to be reckoned with. And Hyun Sook Kim has given it all he can, but so far has not managed to get the better of Tapio Viakis, who took the chip lead away from him and has not looked back. Adds to it, opening with pocket fives on the button. Now eight nine suited for him. Yeah, a limp is... open with the suited connector. Walk me through that. I think he's just saying that I don't really want to be there's some jam stacks here I don't want to limp or I don't want to min raise get shoved it's a really strong hand it's also going to put a, a hand such as that like ace 10 in a weird position does it want to risk shoving with more players to act with also what Tapio might be doing and uh, I think that, that that exact hand was a perfect hand to do it with and for the right reasons so we're getting to see a full range from Tapio and, and really well thought out decisions and uh, I, I just yeah it hasn't made any missteps really in a long time, Ali. I think he's just played a pretty, pretty clean brand of poker here today. I would agree. And I am very impressed with uh, kind of his awareness, his situational awareness. And Mark Wall just putting that ace 10 into the muck. We know that pay jump between fifth and fourth, 37,000 now bigger than ninth place money. And they're only going to get bigger from here. So some ICM considerations. King Jack suited. Vincent jamming. The ace five suited shrivels. Yeah, a king jack suited ace five suited. Not a fun one. Uh, it's not a fun one on calling off. So Vincent gonna go ahead and take that down, and we are still five handed. It is that crunch time. Blinds are four k, eight k. You can see. The ICM value, see what's left. The, the prize that is still remaining is in the seven figure variety. This is 348 up top, second 261, and third is 196. Ali, what, can anyone catch Tapio, or is this just, you think this is just the writings on the wall? I mean, listen, the right thing to do would be for Viakas to win because he's my number two pick in the draft, and we want to get everybody $100 out there who has liked us in the chat. Uh, that said, uh, you know, not speaking tongue in cheek, he has looked really good to me, Jeff. I haven't really seen anything that would give me cause for concern in terms of my confidence that he is going to navigate these waters off of this big stack in a manner that's going to make it very difficult to dethrone him. Of course, anything can happen, but you know, it would take a cooler, I think, for Viakas to come off of this big stack and look at just how much of a lead he has over the remainder of the field. It is just time to break out the mallet, but he's been snug when he's done it. As the king high board allows him to in position fire into Hyun Sook Kim, who just can't do anything about it. Yeah, this is uh, 
this is this is really one of those things that 700 million for Tapio. There's just not much you can do at this point. You're kind of subject to the cards, and you know, Tapio is sort of in complete control of this match. And Kim, though, still 240 is a big difference compared to the other players. You can see he's got 3x Diago, who is in fifth. He's also got you know roughly double Mark and and sort of close to double Vincent. So very uh basically three three different brackets going on here of players. And and right now Tapio just kind of kind of ready to rock he's ready to get the cards in the air he doesn't want anything to change not change his position <laughs> his seat his avatar he's just he's liking it all and he is looking to win that world series bracelet that will be shipped directly to the winner's house he has got his eye for sure locked in on that top prize no doubt about it as a tremendously entertaining final table here at event number seven has seen multiple chip leaders and plenty of action the right recipe for a very good one playing right down to the finish. Jeff and I are going to step aside along with the players for a quick break. We will be back shortly in about four minutes time with continuing coverage of event number seven here at the 2022 online world series of poker presented by GG. Don't go anywhere. Stay close.
believe we're coming back to action. Ali just coming off the break here. We got the bounty tournament going, the mystery bounty. There's a look at who has got what bounties. Five remain. Huge difference between first and fifth. And we are going to look at the payouts there. There's what bounties have been awarded. Of course, that ninth place looks a little extra spicy with that 34K added with 42. But here it is. Five left. And we're playing down to a winner today and giveaway time coming up guys, 212 people hit the thumbs up. I usually like to say, get over X amount. Well, you know, we're just, we're not doing that, but it's going to come up very soon. If you have hit the thumbs up, you're going to be eligible We'll put the keyword up in a second to we'll do that. And then we'll have it ready. So at the end of the show, we'll announce the winner, but Ali, I think you're the last hope for the double, right? It's either going to be a 50 or a hundred. And I think we have only one of the two options for the hundred remaining, which is your player. And look at this. King the good five. news, by the way, is that that person is Tapio Viakas, who is the chip leader. And here he is with King Five against Nine Six, giving Diago Ferreira a spin. Here after the break, Ferreira drawing a line in the sand from the small, and it doesn't look Ooh. good for him. No. Nine high on the river, needed a spin. Tapio indulge ends up with top pair as he continues to run white hot. And look at that stack, Jeff. 783 million. Here comes his bounty. $600. And I'm telling you something, we've still got a $16,000 bounty available and it's going to go to one of these four remaining players as fifth place is Diago Ferreira da Silva. Yeah. Big oh, fifth, fifth place. Uh, I apologize. $110,269. Now 147 K locked up for our four remaining players, real money in a $200 buy in event, the million dollar mystery Bounty number seven of 33 total here at the 2022 World Series of Poker. And we don't cry. We don't eulogize. The action continues. No funerals. Once you get busted, the show must go on. So four-handed action now. First pot between Vincent and Hyunsup in the four-handed uh, level where the A7 defended in the big against the open with the pocket pair. Two overs on the board. But Kim, going to ask the question. And it looks like Vincent... Lays it down, a seven, understandable. Kind of an interesting dynamic uh, developing here, Jeff. I think you would agree for Hyunsup, where as much as I think he wants to be the guy that kind of gets in there and does some things and tries to narrow the gap between he and Bihakas, he has to pay attention to the ICM implications. He's got two guys with roughly 100 million in chips, and he's got that big gap of 50,000 between fourth and third, and then an even bigger one of roughly 65, let's call it, between third and second. You know, these can't be overlooked. No, I can't. And this is a lot. Again, the, the jumps are just so big. This is such a huge, huge opportunity for, for anyone really in any buy-in, but a $200 buy-in, the ROI just starts getting silly when you look at these numbers and what we're playing for. And, you know, Mark, who was chip leader with, with nine left, is still in there in a position where the really key battle matchup is Vincent and Mark, right? This is a big difference between fourth and third place. We're talking about almost of $50,000 and they're both roughly in the same position. So let's see if uh, you know, Vincent's got the jack 10 off and you can see he's thinking about it, but he's kind of cat and mouse game of chicken. Doesn't really want to be the one to put it at risk with such a modest holding. And will we just see Tapio just gets to pick up a vacuum, the yeah. chip over 800 million things really working out for him right now. And he honestly can just go to town. Anytime he gets to be first in get to see him like in a spot here where Kim, let's see if he's just going to keep picking with the button or if he's going to go ahead and, kind of kind of lay down understanding there's a shove stack and a stack that could be very aggressive but no that's not in kim's arsenal ali he's not he's not a quitter he's not a folder seven eight suited now for wall sub 10 big blinds already 10 million plus the annies stuck out there and you can't blame him for mulling this one over he does make the call and he flops himself a spade draw will he just go ahead and stick it in he does looking for any hand to just get away that doesn't have an ace in it you know, Kim, we saw him make a little bit of a wide call earlier with the bounty. This would be pretty miraculous to, oh. to just call there. But at the same time, no, but what is he shoving, Ali? He's got eight high. He says he has an ace. Is he just ripping an ace there? Like, what? I mean, I mean who cares what it? he's shoving? You got jack six, Jeff. You really Don't. want to freaking play for that big pot? 
Ali, don't disrespect him. That's a guy he's on your team and you know, he's capable. Don't sell him short. I tell you that was not a zero. It was not like you said, it was not a zero chance. And I've seen some hero calls that that was a possibility, but yes, you're right. That would have been asking a lot. And Kim still in second. He doesn't need to be too crazy, right? He just, he wants to see a couple bust outs, get heads up, lock up 260, play for the bracelet. That's, that's, that's what is going through his head. You would think, but then again, he is mixing it up and, and we got a, we got King Deuce in the big blind for a min race. Nine, seven, Trey, two clubs, ace high for Wall, the opener still in front. So Mark check, check. min raises instead of shove, which is interesting. I like it, but this does kind of lead it to a very precarious position here, right? You are now on a board where your hand is maybe the best hand. You have no idea. This is a board that's probably going to favor Kim even after the check on the flop. And, you know, Mark just kind of hoping to get the showdown, but this is an important pot for him too to pick up the 50 in the millions to SPR two to one on his stack in there. And as it plays the deuce, the pesky deuce, Ali, you would think it doesn't change much, but it changes a lot. Yep. It gives Kim the best hand here. Ace five was so poised to pick this pot up, just needed to fade six outs. But instead, Kim taking a pot that meant so much more to Wall than it did to Hyunsup. Yeah. And, uh, as it stands, Wall and Vincent in a bit of a war of attrition, looking to outlast one another and collect that pay jump before they maybe take any risks. But the more that you play that game, the shorter both of you get and the more difficult the proposition becomes for you to spin it up and actually get yourself into playable range and not just be flipping. Apio, abusive, queen 10 offsuit. Everybody knows what's happening and yet you're somewhat powerless to stop it. Got himself another queen deuce this time on the button, suited. It's going to be the same thing. And this time, Vincent, this is going to be interesting because I believe, right, the, the, the ICM would be fold, ace nine, although it's very powerful. And you got to believe it's, it's going to be the best hand. So do you take a stand here? He does. He just said, that's enough. I'm not going to fold down. I'd be curious to run this through the calculations, but it's a big moment. Ace nine, queen deuce, ace nine, still in the lead, 71%. Sweaty, Ali. Oh, Gonna hold. In the turn did give a club draw to Tapio. Didn't come in on the river. So the four and ace nine does hold. What a pickup for Vincent now as Mark has his work cut out for him. It becomes far more clear that Vincent has a deep enough stack to outlast him. And I think we'll see Vincent get pretty snug here and wait for Mark Wall's fate to be determined. As we see Viakas with top pair and a slightly better kicker, which turns into two pair on the turn. This is a bad spot for Kim. He's picked up a gut shot as well. 16-5 the lead. Can't really blame him, but he is aware that Wall and Vincent are out there with those shorter stacks. So he's not going to want to bloat anything as we see Tapio just flat. And might that leave Hyun so thinking that the queen is good and looking for value into 83 million? The answer is yes. 27.3 the bet now. And is Tapio going to play conservative and flat or is he going to put the raise in here with queens up? upstairs i think for that sizing you know if you bet 60 50 60 million he's gonna just call but this is just too inviting make it 90 make it 80 tax him maybe he thinks he's got exactly like that or a 10 or a, a weaker queen and he does actually go for a smaller sizing just oh, really milky. Get paid super milky. milky and uh kim just the yeah. snap call can't really blame him for that sizing so uh separation again well i'll top you on his way to 900 my goodness So now suddenly, Hyun Suk Kim finds himself behind Vincent Yushan Wang. And as such, he no longer can kind of sit back and allow Vincent and Mark Wall to kind of bleed out. He's got his work cut out for him. King six here, going to jam it against Wall. King five suited, by the way, kind of, you know, worthy of discussion off of wall stack size that is going to have to spin at some point here, but into the muck it went. Yeah, here we go. Queen five suited, 17 blinds effective. Knows the big blind doesn't want to call. I actually think he could easily just jam here too, but you know, taking a little less risk with if the big blind wakes up with a good hand. We did see Vincent disregard ICM Ali with the ace nine off, just sort of said, you know what? I'm short. I think it's the best hand. This is a, a stand. Not every player would call there. He did take the risk and did get the double, but maybe that's also through Tapio's mind. Like, hey, this guy's just 
going to call a little wider than maybe some will. And I don't want to just flick in 17 blinds. I'm chipping up nicely. And Mark's so short, right? He is really, really critically short. And Mark does go for it. And this is actually interesting. If Kim shoves for the bounty, he doesn't uh, get it. Ace 10 in the lead against Queen 7. Big moment for all the players. And the Queen 7 not looking good on a paired flop. One spade out there. Backdoor flush draw doesn't come in. Six outs once for Mark Wall to stay alive. And there oh. it is. The Seven of Clubs. Binky. <laughs> Vincent and Mark both lighting up the emojis there as Wall will double. Still just 120 million. Obviously not exactly a comfortable depth, but certainly better than seeing the exit in fourth. So... Mark Wall getting a little lucky there against Tapio Viacus. Has anybody done that for the last <laughs> four levels? I mean, it feels like it's been the Viacus show. So the man can lose a pot, as we just saw. Doesn't do it often, though. Claws back a big blind and some annies from Mark Wall. He's going to have King 10 suited here, and it is the kind of hand that he could decide to go with, but no, keeps it snug. Kim. Yeah, uh, I like it. I like I like the shove. I like the fold. And I mean, kind of, I think Kim realizing that Tapio is just going to go. This, I'm actually a little surprised. Like he doesn't just shove here. That's like the perfect kind of, again, everyone has the exact same stack. No one wants to bust. No one's really going to call. But there's, again, more, you know, it doesn't mean you just have to shove 100%. And that was really in the bottom few percent of hands, Ali. So a little patience is okay, too. You don't have to just rip every hand. But it is sort of a scenario where that would be a good play, right? I think that's exploitively too. You see this in some high rollers in different spots, but he's sort of seen that these players are not necessarily afraid to call off with like decent hands and that hand really performs poorly. So nice adjustment by Tapio. It's not a mandatory to shove every hand for sure. It goes for Vincent. No callers, no takers. King three. I mean, there's been some unconventional stuff here. I mean, Kim definitely playing a little bit wider and, and looser than in this spot you would think. And this is this is out there as well, but cheers to him. I and mean, he's still keeping himself in second and staying aggressive and being first in. So very powerful stuff from Kim and a little outside the box, but sometimes that's what it takes, Ali, not to just be cookie cutter and, and play as the book says. And he's, yeah. he's found himself some good, good, good stacks think... here. I think Kim is actually recognizing that Wall has been, you know, fairly snug here. Um, and perhaps he assumes that he and Vincent really don't want to kind of tussle. It would take a really specific sort of hand for them to be willing to call it off here. Maybe a, a narrower range than, than one might typically expect. Um, and looking to exploit that. I, you know, I can't speak to what his mind frame is right now, just speculation on our part, but you know, uh, we can see all of the whole cards and the story does somewhat seem to check out, but Mark Wall, ace 10, no choice but to get it all in there. Ace seven suited for Vincent on the button. Might this be a spot where he would dig in? No. Uh, so again, it's not a progressive bounty. The bounties we know what are left. Let's just say hypothetically a 16K bounty is available. It's still look at the pay jump, right? There's 50,000 and, and more up top. So it's not just like, oh, okay, let's go for the bounty. Let's put it in and try to get a bounty. Good discipline there and actually was in dominating uh, position. So uh, being dominated, I should say, Vincent. So nice, nice discipline. Definitely some players might go for that there, but I like the fold a lot. And look at this. Mark Wall is going to wake up with an A7 suited in the small blind, provided that Hyun Sub Kim doesn't try to beat him to the punch with a King 8. We've seen him take a hand like this and jam it. Be a terrible time to do it as Vincent for sure is a caller with two kings out of the big clock is going in, but it is a raise, just a raise. So a path to an exit, perhaps what a discipline lay down for Mark Wall, Jeff, out of the small. He certainly could have afforded to just call there, would have been a big commitment off of his stack, but instead he gets away and now the all in from Vincent. And you know how powerful that's going to look. Yeah. Yes, it is. And uh, also if he had folded, I think Tapio with those stacks in the big blind would have shoved. So Vincent, nice pickup, timely, puts him actually in second place, interestingly enough, sort of just ahead of Kim. And we're, we're, we're at that stage, Ali. It's moving. Hands are going. People are active, forehanded, nowhere to hide. Time to, time to get it. Who's getting the bracelet? We'll know very soon. We are playing to a winner. Want to put the keyword in the giveaway right now because this thing's going fast. You never know. It could be over in one hand. Let's get it in there. 
keyword is WSOP GG. Type that in the chat. We will pick someone. It'll be 50 or hundred dollar giveaway. You see the all in. Oh, this could be it. This is, this is going in. I think Ali, this is likely going in. There yeah, it is. There it is. Over the top of the open by Mark Wall with ace queen comes Hyun Sup Kim who has him covered with two eights. 996 favoring Kim Wall needs help doesn't get it on the turn six outs once needs the ace of the queen here comes the peel can he do it again no Ooh. this time paint but not the right card a king of hearts and that will leave the chip leader coming into this final table Mark Wall on the outside looking in a fourth place finish for him going to be good for 147,000 as humans of Kim back up over 300 million and picking up a bounty of $260 million. Still, the $16,000 bounty does remain in play as we are now down to three-handed action. And it is an ace three on the button for Hyun Sup. Yeah, and I, I, the keyword is unlock WSOPGG. It's in the chat. If you've hit the thumbs up button and you're typing WSOPGG, we'll let that go for a minute or two. You will be eligible, but as it stands, three left, 50 or 100 coming your way for someone in there. We will do a giveaway. Uh, I, I could pick a random name here sort of down the stretch, Ali, but this is this could be over in a second. We got to get this giveaway sorted up so we're not waiting at the end of the show, man. This is this is moving fast. Woo, Tapio upstairs, checking the temperature, and Kim doesn't like getting played back at, but not really fun to just rip it in here when you're so close to a bracelet and a $67,000 pay jump. <laughs> Exactly. I think the pay jump and the fact that Vincent's sitting out there with 180 million, you know, the, the ICN, you just, you let it go. And by the way, I don't think Tapio has shown some reputation for three betting recklessly. You know what I mean? He might do some open, some probing bets or whatever, but in terms of when he's actually getting out there and making a big statement, it, uh, it seems to be authentic thus far. You say that he did show us that Jack deuce off, which was a critical moment in the tournament right. that sort of, but you're, but to be fair, I think that the aforementioned it is so bad, like the stack sizing, the money, it's just not a time where you just want to oh, a four bet jam, modest hand and hope that I get a fold, right? This is, this is critical times. And man, Tapio really effectively using these things to his advantage. Well played again and not over, but he's got a massive, massive spot, about double the combined chips in play. Uh, pretty credible, I think, is the way to describe most of Tapio's maneuvers here at the final table. Obviously, you sprinkle in a little something for balance, but uh, you know, I think the players recognize this guy's not out there dancing uh, light all too often. Um, you know, despite being this big, overwhelming uh, chip stack, at least when he is three betting, uh, I think the lion's share of the time he's he's really had the goods. Meanwhile, here he is, king ten suited. Opening Ooh. on the button to 24 million and ace in the big blind three handed Jeff. The value of this sort of hand goes up tremendously. Yeah. Um, the call comes in instead of the shove, which is good news for Tapio because now he's going to get to, um, he's going to get to bet this board and, and continue yeah. a great, great board for him. 58 could bet 15. So quarter pot, there it is quarter pot. And now Kim ace five off really hard to just kind of call down here does start with one and a welcome king for oh, Apio, who just just this hey it's working white hot is viacus the nine of spades was working for him could have picked up equity a lot of ways and the king a very nice way to do it and he checks back top pair now a queen on the river and of course for kim having defended and peeled one off on the flop might think that he could probe and maybe shed some of these deuces maybe a six Instead, he checks, and now Viakas goes to work with that 48 million chip bet. And Kim yeah. could get curious here. Yeah, it doesn't have a seven, eight. I mean, the 10 jack does come home if he picked up equity and bet the gutter, but you start taking the hands, you can beat what he's doing. And Kim's definitely curious, for sure. He's been a curious player. He doesn't like folding, but this, is, uh, this would be quite a call. And he does call, and it is not the correct one in the instance. Tapio, man, huge pot, huge separation. It is, it's moving his direction, man. He's trying to get to that million. What does he even know? Is it a billion? He's got 904 million chips. I mean, not much more places to go. We're running out of chips and bounties to be awarded, but we are going to see him try to finish off that. You said it, Ali, there's a 16K bounty left to go onto that prize pool of 348 up top. So plenty to play for here. Big money for the top three guaranteed. King four on the button for Kim. Takes one down. Now it's a queen 10 suited for Tapio on the button. 
more than enough kit, more than a deep enough stack. It's gonna go ahead and jam it. You gotta, you gotta call it all off if you wanna dance with me, he says. All right, guys, the WSL PGGs, I love it. I see it. I see it. people are participating. You're active. If you did it once, you're in. We'll stop that for now. And uh, you still have a chance to hit the thumbs up. 300 of you are in officially with that 1,683 watching. Thank you, guys. And we will be picking a winner today for that. So thank you guys for entering. I hope you're enjoying the show. And we are, we are going to play to a winner, Ali. It's getting there. It's really getting there. Well, we got the podium. We just don't have the running order. I'm sorry. Final three, do battle here. A 10-5 suited out of the small blind for Viacus. And he just min raises here. I like what I'm seeing, Jeff. Yeah, he's gonna he's gonna force some snap folds. He's also gonna just not jam and get called and, and give up a huge portion of his chip. But this particular board, Queen King, this is one of the problems with calling King Queen. Certainly can't fold. I, I don't think after the flop, except the sizing though, Ali. Goes big and uh wow. Oh my god, look at this card. Vincent with the queen of clubs working in two overs on this paired flop, peels one off and hits a disaster card. The king of clubs, he can go nowhere, has a club redraw, has top pair and has it checked to him by Viacus who has the flush and is looking to induce and he's probably going to succeed. Look at the SPR, 131 million out there. Ooh. Vincent with 105 million back, checks back and now hits the bigger flush with the queen of clubs. And that check back, my goodness, Wow. Wow is right, but also he got made a great play, but also kind of got unlucky, right? If he had bet or got it in, he would have got there and doubled. And now Tapio, who's really played miraculously well, is going to get a chance here. I mean, you can't, how, you got to believe he's going to fold. How can this guy be bluffing here, right? There's he's three handed. There's, he's got a hundred behind. You know, if he has a, if he has a uh, eight, seven of clubs, a jack of clubs even is probably going to check back. I mean, it's basically, figuring he's got the the nut or the second nut club here i mean you got to believe tapio is going to fold but he's not folded yet uh, he's got two clubs in his hand ali tough decision i just don't know jeff what do you do i i think i mean i think i would fold i just believe in this particular spot the player doesn't have a bluff but of course whole cards are up you also have two in your hand which is a, a bit of a a reason to kind of call i just oh gets it anyway well played all around and i, a, I, I, oh, I a full well, double for vincent yushen wong this was the moment he'd been waiting for loosening his collar a touch as he has 334 million and a decent gap between himself and hyun Suk kim who has been southbound gets himself a walk here but has his work cut out for him with these blinds six and 12 million he sits with 180 and is going to need to make something happen 9-10 suited now for Vincent off of that newly minted stack opening a king out of the big for Tapio, just a min raise to call. You, you know what I think? Ooh, 23 it, bets it. Wow. You know, I think the determining factor in that call was that Tapio was thinking, does he shove a king? Because he doesn't really have many aces there, right? Because he min raised pre and they just got called. So I think in his head, he's thinking, does he really have the ace of clubs here? And is he going to shove anything else? So very nicely done by Vincent to go for value with the second nut club there. And I think that that was sort of what he was thinking. There's not many clubs that make sense because he doesn't have the ace. So what is, it's got to be the king or not. I think that was ultimately the determining, determining factor and also him thinking that Vincent's capable of bluffing. So he gave his opponent some credit for being able to not have the nuts. So uh, cool hand there. Very cool hand. Nice, nice hand for Vincent. What a turn of events for Vincent. Kings of Kim's ace 10. Gets one through. Pocket fours yeah. for Viacus. Oh, looking to jam. It would have taken a pretty specific hand for Vincent to be willing with that small chip lead over Kim to dig in. And Viacus, of course, knows that. So pressing. A7 now dominating the King7. And Vincent jams it, wants to play for it all. This is a bit of hand there for Hyunzup and the kind of character who could definitely recognize the three-handed. This is something that could perform somewhat well, but just clicks fold. Jack gonna jam it. 
Seven eight suited, oh so pretty, but not sure this is the moment. Yeah, not a not a exciting time if you're Vincent or Kim. Of course, exciting that you guarantee a lot of money, but it's it's, it's you're kind of handcuffed here to Tapio. You really don't want to be the one to go out. Look at these stacks, so similar. The difference is Tapio sort of these guys. He had them down to like 100, 110, and now they've sort of doubled up each. Very dangerous blow. If they were to double, they would be tied essentially for the chip lead. So Tapio's got to be a little bit cautious in how he's flicking it in. Although we did see him just exert force with force, put it all on the line. Can't blame him there with that that hand, that position. Um, I I mean, you got to go Tapio still, right? Ali, he's got the chips. He's got three X basically second, but um, Vincent and, and Kim are not ready to give up. They are definitely fighting, looking for that bracelet still, three-handed. It's in reach. Pair of nines on the turn. Four to a straight on the board. Now a pair of deuces on the river for Vincent. Touch of showdown value. Clubs get there. Yeah, could 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 block her back, could check, and then it's just a matter of nine four does not with the four liner clubs, so much happening. Just just check back, pick it up. So it's 250 to 240 now. Everyone is in reach, and we are gonna see a playable couple hands here. Raise at the new blind level of seven and fourteen million. So we need to skate, and the king ten out flops the ace eight. Some checks back wisely. Yeah, it's a super wet board. Two flush draws, a lot of straight draws. Expect a decent sizing here from the King 10. He does go big in a snap hold for Vincent, understanding that even if he has the best hands, it's going to be hard to hang on there on the river. So nice, nice hand for Tapio. He did have top pair, however. Shout out, by the way, Aros Savali 9, it, it, it looked like. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. My apologies, didn't really catch the screen name there, but on a couple of occasions has stepped into the chat to advise that Tapio Biakis is his or her dad. Um, so that's kind of cool if uh, he's got one of his kids out there sweating him on the rail in the chat. Yeah, very cool. Very, very, very exciting opportunity to cash in on a big score and for some hardware and Still that that mystery bounty, sixteen thousand available. One of the one of the three. I guess two knockouts still available. So it's a pretty good chance, Ali. Someone's gonna win it. Someone gets a sixteen k bounty, and Tapio has got the best striking position on that. Of course, the two middling stacks could tango, but a little less likely. Tapio gonna get a crack, most likely at a, at least one bounty here. And Ace Queen, small blind, big blind. Let's see what he, what strategy he comes with here. Ace queen jam and take it. Wouldn't mind seeing a limp there, Ali, because that's very likely Tapio is going to have a, a wide variety of hands that he's going to want to raise the limp, and I think that'd be a good spot to to limp shove. Of course, it's not fun if your opponent checks back and you get the king four three flop and you have ace queen. But um, oh, interesting, interesting strategies. Different people exercise blind on blind, especially when you're tangling with the chip leader out of position. Blinds sharing a seven as Tapio with the seven deuce suited raises it up. This is a good board texture here for him to just sprinkle something in there and try to take it down. These paired boards make it tough for a player to be able to continue without a meaningful connection, which is difficult, as we know. Nice follow through. Take it down despite having the dominated seven. Now a we'll walk for Hunsuk Kim. And we're kind of in this uh, wait for a collision phase, aren't we, Jeff? Yeah, uh, Tapio definitely can can exert a little more force than the others and take a few more chances, but the other players still do have some some healthy stacks, so he can't just completely just go go ham and start jamming. And also, I think these players are showing us the propensity to play pots, to not be afraid. And everyone at this point, man, one hundred ninety six thousand. You know, I think uh, yeah, I think I think Tapio is just going to try to chip up, chisel him down, and and get to heads up. But Vincent all of a sudden is is getting a little bit shorter, one hundred and sixty. Three million and Kim's gotten some pretty good distribution three-handed allowed himself to be all in and take down some pots here but he's also gone wide Ali he really has pushed it on spots where we would see many people not be shoving or being aggressive he has done that and this is a big function of why he has still a, enough chips and a healthy stack not not blinding out 
Nice hand here for Vincent to jam. East nine, gotta pick a hand, and why not this one? Jams it, 10-8. Not the kind of hand you want to dig in with. Well, 6-3 suited, jack-9 off. This has got the makings of a limp. And this is what I was saying, a hand like ace-queen, where you might get top order to raise a hand like 6-3 suited uh, if you limp to. Maybe try that with the ace-queen. But let's see what, what, what Kim does. I mean, Kim's honestly, he's a wild card. He could do anything, even a, a fold there, which I'm a little surprised by, Ali, especially with his style of play. Queen on the button for Kim is coincidentally way the best hand right now, but are you going to step out? No. Nice walk there with A3 off. Yeah, nine seven suited. See the raise. A very interesting hand, the small blind, but doesn't want to go for a call in the 10 8 offsuit calls and now a tough position ali you this is high talk about high pressure situations you hit the board you might have the best hand you're against the chip leader he's got some equity and can you hold on what sizings does tapio go you might see a little even bigger sizing he he has been doing kind of a little larger on bluffs he's got a gut shot and there it is hi I and mean, if you're going to call 10 it off this is a mild flop hard to make a pair but look at this tapio exercising the blinds are up ali eight Million sixteen. Could this be the one? Is this the level where we see a, a champion crown, or maybe the next? The blinds are big. The action's fast. Ooh, king nine well, here. I mean, let's look at it. You're in that fifteen and less big blind depth for Hyun Suk Kim and and Vincent Yushin Huang. And you know, we talk about ten big blinds. Maybe a lot of people are saying it's the shove fold kind of range. Uh, but the blinds come around so quickly. It's anti poker. You really do need to make a move. I wonder whether or not Kim is going to get really snug here, sitting on that margin with, with Vincent. Uh, unless, of course, Vincent were to maybe double through Tapio and make things different or chip up and leave him in third place. Or if he's just going to apply the ICM pressure and just sit back and wait, because that jump from third to second, not at all insignificant. $65,000 in money. It's very significant. Again, the ROI, talking about buy-ins, right? We're talking about $200 buy-ins for an absolute huge score, huge opportunity, and that bracelet to come in the mail. What a feeling that must be. And there are still plenty left, Ali. Can you confirm 23, 25 to 23 remaining, including the main event? Yep, that's right. A lot of poker still to be played. Certainly welcome all of you if you're getting the bug, getting the itch right now to sign up on GG Poker and definitely be a part of this massive field uh, world series just so much demand so much opportunity right there as the king jack jams the button and takes it down yeah i think well uh, the mystery bounties have been a wild success i think we'll see more of those more formats of those incorporating plo progressive bounties i think that's one of the biggest things about poker why it's so healthy there's so many innovative formats there's also things such as the big blind annie that came in several years ago that helped speed up the tournament it makes a lot of sense so i mean it's great to see poker health in a really good spot really healthy world series live now online and uh yeah i'd say that poker is in one of the best places it's been in a long time and i know you and i have been in the game for so long i would say other than kind of that money maker boom this is sort of the most exciting time of poker and then you meet with technology and what's going on with gg and innovations and you know the software it just kind of all is shaping up to be an amazing experience for for everyone involved and yeah we hope you have the opportunity to play some wsop bracelets Online. I mean, look, uh, you know, it's really tempting to think that we're just playing for the home team, the people that sign the paychecks. But, you know, it it is an endorsement by both you and I to have uh, joined forces uh, with GG. Uh, you know, I know I speak for both of us uh, when I say that I recognize that the efforts that they have put in to become the front runner, the juggernaut, the true force in online poker, uh, kind of on the bleeding edge of innovation and uh, looking to deliver the best experience to the players and listening to the pros who have helped to shape that experience and make it something that is not just geared toward pros, but also geared toward recreational players. You know, most of whom we're bearing witness to right now, having the moment of their lives, sitting here in this million dollar mystery bounty. Uh, you know, it's not an accident. It really isn't. And, uh, and it's cool to see here. 
uh, as this wildly entertaining event number seven final table has been one that it's been a privilege to preside over here. And we've got ourselves Ooh. a collision between Yunsip Kim and Tapio Viakas. Ace five against ace nine. There is a lot of opportunity here, Ooh. but the ace five four puts Kim in front all of a sudden. Wow. Nine, Big the only river card sweat. He needs to fade. And is it paint? paint. It is. It paint. looks that way. So ace five and a big key double for Kim as Vincent shows off that he had a five. A little bit of a needle perhaps to Viacas who got very, very unlucky there. And now could he be getting unlucky again with an ace four against what is an ace king in the big blind for Tapio? First things first, Kim's going to min raise open to 32 million. What's Tapio going to do? After having been double through a note that Kim wastes no time to make a little bit of an adjustment and get more aggressive. Now 96 million from Tapio, the three bet from the small. A jam from Vincent, Kim out of the way. And now Viacas, could the wheels be coming off in short order? Ace, queen, eight, ace, king, well in front. The 10 is no help to ace four. He needs a four and a four alone in order to bust Vincent. Instead, it's a six. And now both of the smaller stacks have taken big bites out of Viacas, a one-two punch. Still in the chip lead, but now things are very different. Yeah, that's, I mean, look at this swing. Ali, we went from talking about a runaway Tapio, get to kind of just chisel and, and puppet around, get, get it done. And now all of a sudden he's got a dog fight on his hand. 550, Vincent doubles up, Kim doubles up. Anyone is able and willing to win right now. That is a, that was a bad moment for Tapio in terms of chip distribution and the ace four suited, maybe sit one off, right? Maybe just decide, Hey, like to be fair though, he, he was right. Right. The guy had a jack age oh in uh wow. These, this is, yeah. we got stuff going on. What's here, happening. Man. All of these aces now hitting their side cards. It's deuces for Kim out flop by the ACE 10. Always the best hand. Could Viakis maybe be riding the ship? Obviously a third over card after Viakis makes the call in position is cause for concern for Hyun Sub Kim. That dry texture, you got a guy peeling, certainly got to respect the sort of hand composition that should be in that range and it should fare well against Ace Deuce. Yeah, it's a big important pot and top view. I mean, it's a kind of an innocuous jack, right? There really shouldn't be many jacks in the range here for his opponent so i think they right. see a see a see a nice nice bet here and kim man who's so sticky just found some chips is he really going to want to go speculatively calling down here this would be a big call to make right you the pot would be really juiced up he's either you could think of hands you're beating but i think you got to cut your losses here nice 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 fold. nice fold there from kim and i'll tell you what from an emotional standpoint, I think that was a really key pot for Viakas to take down. Obviously, no showdown, so you know he doesn't know he had the best of it. But when you take those one-two punches, man, you're a little bit woozy. You're light on your feet. It reminds me of a boxer. All of a sudden, you got you know caught with something on the chin, and it feels like one more punch, and you might go down. Uh, and as we know, you know these final tables are very swingy, a lot of momentum, uh, and it can be emotional out there. Tilt is real. You know, you take a couple of bad beats, all of a sudden the lug nuts get loose and it could all come crumbling down in a hurry. As we see both players connecting with this ace king eight board, bottom pair against second pair advantage, Kim who fires 25 million as a seabed. Yeah, I mean, this has been an exciting few hands. We've had such a such an eventful final table and just no letdown at the end. Just not a not a walk off runaway we're getting to see some poker getting to see a battle here and tapio if he wants his bracelet he's gonna have to he's gonna have to dig in because it's no one giving it to him today that's for sure you're right look at that classy fold by the way by vincent there with bottom pair didn't feel like he had anywhere to go on that board texture so just got away from it good composure queen eight three meanwhile as ace 10 remains the best hand biakas opened the button a defense from kim now it's checked to him c bet of 20 million Guys, I want to give you one more opportunity to hit that thumbs up. If you haven't typed WSOP GG in the chat, you have a chance. 336 have hit the thumbs up. We almost have 2,000 people watching at the moment. So don't be lazy or if you're really not enjoying the show, I'm sad because Ali, this has been fun. High production, high action, high buy-ins. We've got it all and we got a giveaway for you. So make sure you get that in because once we get the heads up, we'll announce that winner and that's it. So you got a little more opportunity. Let's, let's dig in. Let's finish the show strong and let's get involved right here, Ali. This is... I, I I'm, I'm excited, man. I'm excited. This is, this has been a really fun final table. What do you think about PLO 
mixed game or a mystery bounty mixed game tournament, mystery bounty PLO. Are you on board on mystery bounty anything at this point? Buddy, uh, mystery bounty anything. I'm in. Go fish. Uno. I don't care. Like it's awesome. It really is. It makes for such a cool dynamic. And you want to talk about let's go. Ace 10 suited. Hyun Sub Kim, the open. Viakas mulling over what he wants to do with these two fours. And this is the kind of hand I could see Kim going with if Viakas decides to ask him the question here, which he very well could do. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This is uh, the problem is the problem is the sizing. And like you don't probably think you have full equity. Do you want to roll the dice? on a flip when you maybe have an advantage and look at the discipline. I think that speaks to Tapio saying, Hey, I'm, I'm confident post-flop. I'm going to find some good spots. I don't want to just be gambling. It honestly could be in worse position too. Right. Could just have sixes or, or fives. And now I just had a thought. I feel like you're one of the more well-traveled people, you know, hotels, flights, you've done it. You've been in the business. long time. I got an idea and, and maybe we go into business together on this and then we could coin it, get a website. But what do you think about taking the mystery bounty concept, off the tables and into the travel world. Mystery bounty flights. You register for a flight online. You don't know what seat you're gonna get or like a hotel, you know? You could get like a really good room or not. Is it, is it oh, hold on, hold that thought. We got an all in. Oh, and it's no. ace, queen, six. Disaster for Vincent drawing dead on the turn as the ace actually rolls off case card. Both players hit it. Of course, Hyun Soop Kim with ace, queen, managing to hold and take down. Vincent Yushen Wong, the Aussie, going to finish in third place for 196000 His bounty is going to be collected. How much is it? $110, which means the $16,000 bounty is going to go to the next person. So you're going to win this thing, pick up 348000 and we know that last bounty is going to be sixteen grand. Nice little overlay. So heads up play begins. Top Yoviakas, 658000 Neck and neck effectively with Yoon Suk Kim. The man from Singapore, button, wishing each other good luck. Top class, love to see this. 910 suited, certainly enough kit to get in there. 50 million, the open, two and a half X with the blinds at 10 and 20 million. Two and a half million is the Annie per player, effective. It, it, I, I like with the ace four, by the way, Jeff. Oh yeah. Right. And this is a peelable hand here. I think we're going to see five or I'm sorry, see three, at least let's see if Kim is willing to peel here with a very powerful hand heads up in position. I got to believe so, but you know, at the bracelet now it's time. Someone's getting a bracelet. The money's amazing, but look at this. He does fold interesting and nice play by Tapio. Uh, I will say guys, once we hit 500 thumbs up, I'm going to roll. I'm going to announce the winner. I will do that. We're at 395. It is time to announce a winner. So it's, it's going to be 100 or 50. I'm just making it 100, Ali. Let's just do 100. It feels right. I mean, the, the guy's heads up. We don't want to like be biased for the, the, the chat to want one guy. Oh, let's just give a $100 ticket for the winner. We got to get to, to 500 thumbs up and we'll announce that winner uh, before the end of the stream here, guys. But Kim and Tapio, who do you got? It doesn't matter. It's a $100 giveaway coming. And Ali, who do you pick? Who's your pick right now? Heads up. I mean... Did I you win the dinner? You, I just do. You, you won I the dinner, do. right? Did you just did blank me? We don't have a sweat. Did you just get both your guys in there? Or do I have Kim? You have Kim. And you have, I have you Kim have... and Viakas, but everybody out there has Viakas as my number two pick for the $100 as opposed to the $50 in terms of a ticket. You're right. But I'm just, we're just going with the hundred. I, I can't take it. It's just too intense. I don't want to stack that. I don't want to stack everyone. I, it's for a bracelet, Ali. I don't want the whole world versus versus uh, Kim. That just feels wrong. So we're just going to go 100, 100 at 500 thumbs up. I see you guys getting active. Those of you sleeping, maybe, you know, lounging across the room or getting over and hit that thumbs up. 1765 of you. And uh, we are, it could be over in any, any moment. 783 to 456. And look at this. Big hands for heads up play, Ali. Uh-oh, ace 10 in the big. Certainly could three scoop it after the min race open with 10 jack suited. And 910 suited is one thing, 10 jack suited. A little bit better. And Viakis is going to call. We see three. It is top pair against a gut shot. Lack of a spade is obviously inconvenient for Viakis. And Kim certainly should be C betting off of 356 million into 245. That's exactly what he does. 80 million plus. And for Viakis, we don't make these sorts of calls without looking to peel. Wow. So peel, he does. Three of clubs is very dry. No help to Viakas whatsoever. And if Kim is willing to barrel again, I think he will take this pot down. 
Yes. And um, Tapio can't blame because there are some maybe some pairs and stuff that would take a stab that would give up. Maybe he's got some intention to win on a later street. But look at this. Kim has the lead, Ali. It is now Kim, who is your chip leader. Heads up for World Series bracelet, playing for a decent chunk of change, almost 90 grand, give or take. So big match, big, big moments here. Who's it going to be? Your pick's as good as ours. Let us know who you think is going to win in the chat. Let us know where you're watching from. What an electric day. And Ali and I will be back for the main event, I believe, September 27th, Ali, or I think that's a Monday or Tuesday. It's, it's in that range. Somewhere there, we'll be doing the World Series final table main event. That's going to be an exciting one. This has been great. That'll be extremely great. And we are going to see a winner today. I'm going to go. I think Kim's going to get it, man, at this point. I'm going to flip just with the chips. But I just feel like that momentum, I think he's – that's my pick at this point, even though you have both. I'm kind of out. I owe you a nice dinner, Ali. <laughs> All good, brother. As we see a pair of threes on the end for Hyun Soop Kim, who picked up the equity on the turn in the form of an open ender and takes it down after pairing his three. Both players sharing a four now. Jeff, it could be over quick. So I just actually had my producer, Nathan, grab me a little popcorn. I'm strapped in, buddy. How oh, about you? You want a little bit? I, Jeff, sounds you good. ready? I, oh, I, say I, ah. Say ah. <laughs> we got it. It could, it could be over in one hand. That's a, that's a fact. It is literally these guys go for it. Kim, I think, I think Kim is just going to, I got a feeling we're going to see a massive all in. I don't even think it's going to go. I don't think it's going to go to, to, to the street poker. I think we might just get to see it for a bracelet. How, how big is it to be heads up for a bracelet? When you start Ali, when you play 51,000 people in a tournament to be heads up is sort of, it's miraculous in itself. It really is. I mean, truly the accomplishment cannot be overstated to fade that many players to pick up a bracelet I mean, the endurance, you know, you make one misstep and it can all be over. That's the nature of no limit hold'em, right? And obviously you got to get lucky. You got to hold in some spots, not take the bad beats. It's okay to say it. Luck is an element of winning any tournament, but you got to do things right and you got to pick your spots. And I think to both of these players' credits, Jeff, I, I really do believe that in terms of the way that they've played here at this final table, they are the two that deserve to be heads up. Yeah, I think that's that's absolutely right. They've they've played well. They've been aggressive. They made moves. They've they've stuck in there. They've showed heart. I mean, Kim, I was really impressed forehanded that he was ripping it in light, ripping it in and putting pressure, picking up some pots that others aren't willing to take. And here he is, heads up, and he gets a little unlucky on this flop. He did three x pre. He's now behind, but he's got a heart and two overs. I don't think he can go anywhere. And look at this little uh, little. This is this is uncomfortable if you're Tapio. You got a pair. It's hard to make. But you do stick oh, on and less. Did you less say you got a pair? Update. He's got Update. two pair. Seven yes. on the turn. Obviously, nine ten does get there if we do think there are some draws in Kim's range to be check raising. But bottom two is a very strong hand in this spot, especially now with Kim checking and not barreling at us once more. We've got to feel comfortable with it in a 349 million chip pot. He is going to jam it. King Queen can do nothing but fold. And some nice reclamation there for Viakis, who's Narrowed the gap once more. Does not have the chip lead any longer. He does not. He does not. He is, he is, uh, he is really in a, this is as close as it gets. You see the blinds, 10 million, 20 million. And this is going to go down the wire. The both shot clocks are healthy. We see the chess clock, right? Eight minutes and, and five minutes. That would hate to see a world series race to come down where someone's out of time having to make five second decisions. So both these players, depending how long this goes, should be, should be good on time. And uh, we are going to see a, a lot of limping Stratio from Tapio with the stack 20 million big line. Look at this. A limp re-raising strategy, Jeff, with 3-4 off suit. And now Kim with ace-10 off. This is the first time he's really run into this out of Viacus. I wonder how he's going to react. Uh, I, I would just suspect this is going to go in, but you're right. That is a, un a unfamiliar sight. And interesting from Tapia, who's been pretty patient, knows Kim is, is capable and aggressive to just decide to like heads up, put up the variance and, and rip, rip, you know, put the four, three uh, re-raise on either way. Uh, Kim now has roughly a two to one lead. So ball in Kim's court, he's got position. He's got the best hand after the flop. We know queen seven off is a computer hand, Ali, and heads up. That is the dead middling hand. We're seeing queen eight suited slightly better and has the button. And six, four, going to take a little pry with the gut shot. And six, four is going to snap, give up here. And Kim. 
Interesting if he thinks he has to bluff or not. Just willing to check it down as Tapio with just the nut low, 6-4 there. Uh-oh, king-queen and a couple of nickels. A limp from Viacus. I guess we can't say nickels, Jeff, when we have such an international audience. We just got to call them fives. People may not know what we're talking about. It's the five-cent coin in the States for those who maybe wouldn't otherwise know. That's why we say nickels over here. But important to acknowledge that there are people wow. all this is over the globe. Whoa, what just happened? We got this it all in. in here. Blink and you'll miss it. King, queen against two fives. The fives holding on a nine trade deuce board. Suddenly the king on the turn. Biakas sitting pretty, no heart for Kim, just got a fade of five and he's done it. A double as Viakis now jumps into the lead once more, 774 million. Wow. Ali, it's just, you know, I don't know if you have dinner plans, lunch plans, what's going on, but this is, we're taking uh, this to the end. Eat, you I got, got popcorn. your popcorn. You're chilling. You're right. You're right. You're right. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you are, you're all set over there. We've got ourselves another match to go. It's not over yet. That 16,000 bounty we know is going to get awarded to the first prize as the only bounty remaining. We saw that million dollar bounty get awarded on the first hand of day two from Scott Ballas Rum Cakes. Pretty amazing story where he thought he won a thousand, found out from a friend who called him that it was in fact a million. And uh, here we are, million dollar bounties getting handed out in 2022, Ali. It's a great time to be alive. We're happy to be here with you, and we hope we'll see more mystery bounties. 23 more events for the World Series. You guys can still play on GG Online. If you are about to consider playing, that is an option if you are able to do so in a jurisdiction where GG is offered. So good luck to you out there participating. Ali and I hope to see you at the final table later in September. We will do the coverage of that. Whole card's up. Same thing. Ali will have the popcorn. I'll have my coffee, and we'll be ready to go. I just found a piece of popcorn up my sleeve, Jeff. That's how aggressively I had to go to the popcorn after that pot wow, King Queen wow. two fives. This, you know, I was reading in the chat, somebody wrote, this has been a banger final table. I couldn't agree more. I've been entertained. I trust, I, I, I'm speaking for both of us when I say that. And we certainly hope that you've been entertained and you've been enjoying today's coverage. There is the Ace King Queen flop, which gives Hyun Suk Kim suited connector a flush draw for five, unable to continue as we see. Biakis, who has reclaimed the chip lead, Laying it down, and now we play 12 and a half million, 25 million. How often do you get to say that no. here at the final table of event number seven? Pocket threes for Viakis, a little min raise open, seven deuce suited. Yeah, that's that's true. That is not often, that's not often, and it's not often you get to buy in for 200 and play for 348,000 on a broadcast. Whole cards up and win a World Series bracelet, but we are oh oh Ali, oh this is in again. We're flipping, flipping for hardware. Here Ace King is. suited against pocket threes. Nine eight five leaves the threes in the lead. Viakis holding on the turn. Is this the moment we crown him champion? Let's squeeze the river. Six outs. You got a fade, and it looks like he's done it. It's a three sider. It's not paint. It's not a no sider, and we have ourselves a champion here in event number seven. It is the Finn Tapio Viakis who has won three hundred and forty eight thousand seven hundred and twenty three dollars. There is a look at the final breakdown. It happened quick and suddenly it is Hyun Sook Kim who has to take home silver and second place no shame in it $261,490 Viak is going to collect that $16,000 bounty for dessert what an incredible final table Jeff what a privilege what a pleasure I know it seems like we're just showering praise but I mean it buddy this was this was one for the books it's actually unbelievable. I can't believe 50,000 plus the guarantee hit. This is a very popular format. We'll be seeing more of that. We'll be seeing you guys again for the main event. Again, final table later in September for Ali and I. What a day. I got to announce the winner, Ali. Jimin Kim. He won the $100. We're giving it to him. J-I-M-I-N space Kim. Please put your username in the YouTube chat. We'll get you a $100 ticket. Your GG username. Thank you so much, Ali. Been a pleasure, man. Thank you so much. And look forward to seeing you in Cyprus. Yes, sir. For the Triton series out there, uh, really uh, just congratulations to the Finn Tapio Viakis, very deserving champion. He is going to be having a hand packed special delivery in his mailbox coming up here with a very uh, special World Series of Poker Bracelet for his mystery bounty 
here. And listen, uh, he's not the only one that's going to be doing it. We have a total of 33 events that are going to be part of this online World Series of Poker. Still 23 events left. You're going to want to register if you don't have an account already on GG Poker. Get in the game, get involved. Just $200 was parlayed into $348 for uh, Tapio Viacus. So obviously uh, the rewards are great. As Jeff mentioned, the online main event final table will be taking place on September 27th. Certainly looking forward to bringing you that coverage. But in the meantime, that is all the time that we have today. Certainly hope that from whatever corner of the globe and whatever time zone it is that you joined us, uh, that you enjoyed today's coverage. It truly was a privilege for Jeff and I to bring it to you in our very first stream of hopefully many more to come here. Uh, In the meantime, on behalf of our entire production crew out in South Korea, burning the midnight oil, obviously us here in the States, uh, we say thank you to you for joining us. And uh, until next time, many more to come. Keep it close. GG Poker 2022 World Series of Poker Online. Get in the game and we will see you next time. Peace.